Ayy, this ain't a drill. This Only time I plan is on the field. And when I'm on the field, no, I got mad skills. And you know we about to eat this a fast meal. Y'all gotta pay for this heat like a gas bill. We keep on coming back, so yeah, they mad still. Everyone sick, make them pay with some bad bills. Red, white, and blue like Superman, so you know we eating at the Super Bowl. Kill the competition, set up the funeral. Josh Allen catching all the shots you go for. We calling blitz. Ready to start, we ain't calling no quits. I'm the number one draft pick. A lot of y'all talk, but I ain't hearing it. Only listen to Keyshawn and Harris. Talk about the bills, dominating on the field. All our players got them skills. Buffalo won't make a kill when we talk. Talk about the Bills, dominating on the field, and our players got them skills, Buffalo won't make a kill. What's going on? Welcome back, everybody, to another live episode of the Post Podium Podcast, home of the all-truth, no-sodium takes. I am your co-host, Aramis. This is key. And this is key. That's right. That's I just right. I want to start by saying, if you hear my voice, by the grace, grace of God, you made it through the end of another week. Yeah. It was a long week. A very long one, a very snow-filled week. So what? what <laughs> what's going on out there, man? I, listen, I, I said this. I was I was telling Caitlin about this. If you just take spring and fall and switch them, the whole Same, yeah. the whole year makes sense. Yeah, it, it mean, would make more sense. Yeah, cause right. It's because our fall is, te- is technically spring. Right. Because you start, you know, you start off with the end of winter with no snow, almost sixty degrees, <clears throat> and then as soon as fall hits, Ken thinks it's all good. Right. I'm like, fam. You ain't no. been in Buffalo seven years. <laughs> right. I've been here for a while. I've seen things. It's it's weird. It We used to have spring here back in the day. We did. I think that's that El Nino thing and then the La Nina thing and then. Uh, the La Nina thing? Yeah, then the global ice caps note and all that nonsense. Yeah. yeah, all that. all that Something to do with all these plastics. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know, but it grinds my gears. I got a couple other things that grind my gears too, but we'll just keep on going for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going to do something a little different today. I know we got stuff we heard. But let's get to these producer cues, man. You said you got a question today? Yeah, I got some. Uh, I got one question so far right All now. All right, that's fine. One is good. Let's roll. He said so far. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, Another yeah. one shall come. <laughs> All right, so this is. So I'm sure you guys are aware of uh, Kirk Cousins being traded to the Falcons, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he was a free agent and he signed to the Falcons, but yeah. So do you guys remember. What he said in in 2017 when when he was playing for the Redskins when when he said I want to retire as, as a Redskin mm-hmm. and he got traded to the Vikings in 2022 mm-hmm. said the same quote I want to retire as as a Viking now this is 2024 same quote I want I want to retire as, as a Falcon basically he has no loyalty then okay so so my 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 question is to y'all like how do you guys feel about this because right now he's just repeating the same quote over and over and over like like is he truly gonna retire as a Falcon or is he gonna go to go to another team 2025 or 2026 because right now he's speaking nonsense you gotta ask the Falcons because the only <laughs> the only way he's gonna retire a Falcon is they keep paying him <laughs> That's right. the only thing that's going to happen. Right. Whoever that's pays him when he says I'm finished is who he's going to retire with, and he'll be happy to do it. I that's, would, too, if I made $300 million as a, as a quarterback. I don't care where I play. I'm going to retire there. Yep. And that's really all it boils down to. It's, it's just – let me turn this down a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. It, it really is just, you know, as a quarterback, you're the face of the franchise. You have to say stuff like that. You have to, you know, tell people, I'm, I, I want to be here for the rest of my life. I want to retire here. But – um, I'm glad you I, said that. We'll park on that in a moment. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah. I mean, d- does he does he mean it? I think he meant it every time he said it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I just don't Absolutely. think the team was in sync with that one. Right. Like, nah. You're not gonna retire with us, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> we gonna fix your little rear wagon. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, it's it's an interesting thought because there is there is a level of uh, how can I say. I'll just say contradiction to to what most players and what most you know coaches in the league say. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, and that's that's part of the reason they don't want to give people information. You know, I mean, you know, typically when you have media that that kind of holds you to you know everything you say, it's like I don't want to give them anything to stick me with later or shove Unless back in my face later. You suck. In which case, me it's like, yo, I don't care what he says, it's not going to happen. So he has or, credibility. If you're trash, I want to retire right. here. I know you do. But you won't. <laughs> right. You, you're going to retire on that couch. Right. <laughs> Very quickly, indeed. Without a ring. Huh? Without a ring. Exactly. Without exactly. a ring. Without yeah. a ring. If you, if you suck, I mean, you'll, you'll probably get, you know, three years out of the NFL. You might get, if you, you're drafted. If, if you're, you're drafted. drafted. You or or, or <clears throat> if, you, if you're cool with practice squads, just wait till turn. Yeah. 
Because the Bills always have a practice squad of availability for somebody. The Bills are probably one of the most faithful teams in the league with their practice squad. Man, who are you telling? Like, it, it really is amazing how long these guys just stick around. And at some point, they got to be like, even if I did say I wanted another opportunity somewhere else, would I, would I really get it? I'm still making the no. same as a, as a, a median school teacher. I'm good. No. <laughs> I'm a media. No, they got to be making more than that. Some of them aren't. Really? Some of them don't, Some of them make, like, you would be surprised. Some wow. of them are making less than we make. Seriously. What? Yeah. It's yeah. It's like why you why are you even on the team at that just, point? They just think they got that chance. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's just look at it. You I would like it to interview one of those one I, of these guys. I I would probably would cry. My <laughs> eye might water right in his face. Like, <laughs> why are you doing this, sir? That might be something good to do to see if we can find some of these practice squad players and, and, and interview them on the show. They be like, for the love of the game, baby. <laughs> of course. But what, you know what's funny? What are you doing your I don't know if you time? remember this, but. Oh, I just cry. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What, maybe, maybe pre, well, definitely pre COVID, but there used to be a cap on how long you could be on a practice squad. Really? Yeah. And they must have done away with that because these guys are making careers out of practice squad yeah. play now. The scout team. Yeah, Rudy Rudiger's. I mean, to to some degree, there is a there is a level of you know I, I'm I'm on a football team in yeah, the for NFL. Sure. For you sure, know, I'm I'm playing against NFL competition. Mm-hmm. I, you know that that's I, I've never been a believer in in taking a job for the allure of the job. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. to me, at some point you're you're gonna have to tell people about this job and, and, and you know, they're going to see through it at some point. That's you know what I'm saying? You come with those, 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 those hoity-toity names. Uh, right, right. Like, <laughs> um, okay, for instance, right? So so I held, a, I held a, a, a certain title at a nonprofit organization and basically I, I was a glorified uh, uh, investigator. Right. Like that's that's it. You, you know what I'm saying? That's it's it. like I, I but your I, name was like a, a a special a special research and, and investigations yeah. liaison or something I, like that. I take like, everybody's complaints. You know, <laughs> if, if somebody stole something, something I gotta go watch the video. You know what I mean? Like it was it was. It, it, it's like an office space where like, what do you do? I'm, I'm in charge of staplers. Okay, right, so why right. can't? It, well, I gotta get it from. I do my job. <laughs> you, know, <that's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you have no purpose, but you just keep doing the same thing for yeah, no reason. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I. I yeah, uh, I'm. I'm looking at now. We're talking about teams that we're familiar with and want to practice squad. Like, that's the problem. So you know what he is. You know he's not gonna make your team, but but he's holding up a spot for a person that that may eventually make your team at some point. Yeah, because you you just that that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. So there there was this uh, there was a show I was watching, and this casino asked. <clears throat> they asked this uh, this this team of uh, geniuses to come in. If, if somebody knows who, what, what the name of this show, they can put it in the chat. Anyway, so this team of geniuses went to this casino, and you would have thought that they would have found some sort of you know technical issue because the casino was losing money, mm-hmm. and they wanted to find out why. So they start you know looking. They they go to the camera room and they look you know looking at all the cameras and stuff like that. And, and, and the, the the one lead guy goes, "Stop right there." Rewind that. Zoom in on his hands. He goes, "That's your problem right there. His hands are too small." <laughs> now this is this is a this is a blackjack dealer <laughs> whose hands were too small to move fast enough to deal enough hands to keep up speed wise, so that uh, you they know a certain cards. amount of times per hour he was making the amount of money that he needed to make at his table. Was this a movie or a show? It was a TV show. Okay. So, so anyway. So they called a guy into the office and they ended up firing the dude for having small hands. He had a strong hand. It, no, he had small hands. He had small, it, slow hands. Remember a scary movie? No. This isn't my strong hand. He had the little, the little, he had the, he was stirring the peas and mashed potatoes with his, with his little hand. Uh, I wasn't a big scary movie person. I'm not either, but oh. that that's iconic. Matter of fact, you go ahead and talk. I'm gonna put this up, and you okay. go, y'all gonna know at home when he sees it because you're gonna bust out laughing for no reason. <laughs> I might. It, it's, it's, you it's are. Been, I know you are. You like such a long time. Like, what? And everybody at home knows us, but you. So that's that's the funniest part. That's the biggest bit about it. You, you sure about that? Oh yeah, I'm positive. Okay. Because this is this is probably <laughs> the reason why people know this movie. For the strong hand. The strong hand. And this is this is. Oh my I'm saying God. Strong hand. The strong hand. And then the strong hand of God pops up for some no, reason. No, <laughs> like, oh, wait a second. Where are we going with this? Uh, oh, that dude? 
Get the okay. Little, hand, the little strong hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, take that, my strong hand. Oh, that's just nasty. <laughs> that's, just, that's bad. That's bad. If All you guys right. know what I'm talking about without showing you guys, I mean, it's not even X-rated, but if you guys no. know what I'm talking about, put a like in the comments because my comrade did and I'm shocked. Cause I'm not a movie head, but I didn't. I knew it. <laughs> like there are very few movies that I can remember lines from. I've never been that type of person. What's funny about that is every single time the three of us hang out, mm -hmm. you and Mel start going into lines on top of lines on top of lines. So like <laughs> y'all got lines from movies for days, and I just be sitting there lost, like wow. Yeah, I don't remember none of this. You don't stuff. remember none of it? Yeah, I think no. me and Mel had a separate. We had like a, a different vortex or something. I mean. Let me see. I'm just I'm showing them a, a, is this a, a playing? clip. Is this, can they hear this? No, no, no. Oh, okay. no sounds. But he's over there wrestling up his food. He got you know he had to. He gonna serve uh, it up for him. See, I never really got into he, this franchise. He served it up for him. Yeah, yeah. This this was the spoof of the screen movies, right? It, well, it started off as that, and then and then uh, it moved into it it it, it spiraled in like. The grudge and, and and all this other stuff. Oh, but, they started bringing. It yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought it was better later, but everybody thought it was better earlier. You know, I'm just weird. Right. But the strong hand. Anyway, he had little <laughs> strong hands, and they fired him. And, right. And, and so over with. Yeah. So he had the small. So the the point of bringing up the bringing up this story is, he he ended up getting fired for for having small hands, but he'd been with the company for, or he'd been with the casino for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. Like it was like 16, 17 years or something like that. Right. But they fired the guy because yo, you losing us money. Like it really was just a very simple monetary decision. You're mm -hmm. losing us money. These, these geniuses have come in and, and showed us how you're losing us money. You out of here. And no questions asked about that. Like you a good dude. You know, we love you. You can always come here and gamble if you like, but right. you can't. You but can't. you can't work here, man. Yeah. We we losing because of you. You can only hold three cards at a time. You can only three, who holds three cards at a time? Right. It's terrible. So so you know, I mean, to some degree, you want your NFL team to kind of be cutthroat like that in a way because that's what keeps you sharp. That's what keeps mm -hmm. you, you know, on the cutting edge of you know whatever you can possibly do in the NFL to win games. Right. So. You know, I mean, I mean you know, I'm all for it. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and and the players understand it. That's that's why they do everything that they've been doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In, in terms of lowering the price, I was thinking about that the other day too. They like the, the 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 players' union has gotten their workload in terms of like practices and stuff like that to be so 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 much shorter, so much less impactful, softer, right? Softer, softer than what it used to be. Oh yeah. Because of the, you know the the number of games that they play, mm -hmm. now I'll give them that. You play more games. There's more opportunity for injury and stuff like that. But look at the game now. There's still a bunch of injuries. Mm -hmm. Like even with the lighter the lighter practice load. So so what what is it really bo yeah, boiling down to? That has nothing to do with anything. The practice that, is exactly. I, I think I think that's that's the conclusion that I came to because <laughs> if that's the case, how are all these? How, how was Shannon Sharp playing? You know the the amount of games he played. How how was Tony Gonzalez playing the amount of games that he played? How like Ray Lewis? I was like, gonna say Ray Lewis is it, and, you, and and guys even further Lawrence Taylor's and Bruce Smith's right. and Jim Kelly. I mean guys that got hit, guys that weren't mobile, guys that broke stuff. They played. Steve Tasker tells how he broke his hand more times than he can count, but he played how many years? I don't know. I don't know, but I know it was at least ten. Right. You know Thurman Thomas. These guys had injuries, but they played two. They had two of their practices at Fredonia. Right. I was there. I saw it. And they got through it, and they didn't make as much money as they make now. And they and they didn't have the technology. They, they had didn't have the technology. Either. Rub some dirt on it. That's where that came from. <laughs> rub, <laughs> rub some dirt rub on some it. Rub some dirt on it. That's right. Like so, where? Everywhere. Yep. They didn't have Haverbury Chambers. They didn't have, uh, you know, these these state of the art facilities. They had what we had in our high school gymnasiums. If you played college ball, they had what we had in college. That's it. Nothing more. Sometimes less. And they they thrived. So. I don't want to call guys soft, but you know, my mind when I when when I'm thinking about NBA versus the NFL, you know, back in the time when there was a disparity in, in the price of, you know, the NBA contract versus NFL contracts, my main contention was this: even though the NBA is not as, as physical as the NFL, they're playing four times as many games, and they're you know now you got football players that are making more than Steph Curry. Mm. It's like you playing 82 games or on a plane, you know, they play back to backs, they play 50 minutes a night. 
you know, and 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 they're taking a beating. Right. You know, whether you believe it or not, football, uh, basketball players do take a beating, and and they play through it, and they and they gotta perform every night. Right. These guys, they you know, they go to practice what three times. They go film, then they then they work and play on Sunday, Monday, Thursday. And then that's it until a week, you know. But even so, later in the season, a lot of these guys are just doing walkthroughs and right, not really that's it. doing anything. Yeah, they're not. They're getting, you know, they're getting vet rest days and all that stuff. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I respect your hustle, but I mean, come on. If you if you do it, if you're proportionate versus how much NBA players play, how many minutes they play a year versus, um, yeah, I'm making the same pretty much. Even though your your number value is not the same, right? Your worth and your value to the team is the same, so you're making you know equivalent. Right now, if you want to talk about WNBA, that's a whole other matter. We that's that's the one you you don't want to talk about. Yeah, NFL. Nah, I mean, yeah, they talk about we. You know, we're the, we're the largest. Was it the largest uh, watched or the biggest watched uh, sport in America or something like that? NFL. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So they want their piece of the pie. I get it. But right, right. It's tough. All right. Well, let's get to stuff we heard. Um, cause there's a, there's a good conversation I want to bring up, um, shortly after that. Not that stuff we heard is not going to be good, but stuff we heard is going to be, it's, it's stuff. It's going to be stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of stuffy. Okay. A so few things here and there. I didn't think about this earlier in, in our, in our, our podcast career, but we didn't talk about the, the, the proposed rule changes that they had coming up for, for the season. No, we, we did never not. touched about it. So the first one, the biggest one is, that's out right now is the kickoff change. I, I saw something like that that it was, it was gonna it? it was gonna change the, yeah, the, the NFL weird. for the. Have you ever watched XFL? Not no, not to my knowledge. No, okay. I, I watched USFL. Okay, XFL <laughs> is 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 much different in the sense that it, you're gonna be like, excuse me. Basically, the kicker starts on the, on his zone thirty. The, he tees it up on his zone thirty, right? Okay. <clears throat> his 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 line. Is lined up on on the opposing uh, thirty five, so basically there's was that sixty yards between him and his line. Okay, five yards in front of them is the opposing team's uh, front line. So all their blockers are lined up on a line. There's no more staggered. They're all lined up, right? Okay. The only people that can move the kicker and the return man until the return man feels the ball. So they're standing stagnant. Until, okay. What? Yeah. I, see, I see in your face. I got to do it. So, no. I like. I can picture it in my brain. It's just I, like. No, I, I want you to see it. I want you to see it. <laughs> this is not. This is not strong arm. This is. This is. You got to be kidding me. Yeah. And they just stand there and watch the ball drop and get caught, and they then they can drop. start. I'm gonna show it to you right now. And guys at home, you can easily. You can just YouTube XFL kickoff. This is incredible. It's a quick, quick little, little highlight. Watch this here. Here it is. So he kicks it, and he just stands. Catches it, it, and now they move. Wow! <laughs> wow! You know, I think I'm gonna tweet this out. I'm gonna tweet this video out. So if you, if you're watching the video, follow me so you can, so you can see. Uh, that is the majority nonsense. of stuff I'm showing on, on our screen here because uh, we don't have the technology that I know how anyway to see there it is again to show you guys what I'm watching real time. But yeah, look at this. Mm -hmm. You're gonna start ending up with plays like that. I promise oh, you. Oh yeah, and you know what this you know what this flies in the face of McDermott. Oh my God, no! This is I I like that for this reason. Yeah, you can't have core special teamers in. What's the purpose? Right. There's no more six. No, no. Now you're gonna see offensive linemen and defensive linemen and linebackers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's no point in having those little those little fast dudes anymore. And I, I kind of ripped that off, but I thought about it when I when I was when I was. But watching if you're doing it. that, like, what's the point of even having the kickoff? You know what they do on on, on uh, extra points? You're allowed to go for one from the two yard line. You can go for two from the five yard line and three from the from the ten yard line. So I don't. Yeah, that's that's wow. the yeah. So that's one rule that was proposed. Now the other rule, as we just talked about, uh, how I don't want to. Yes, I do. Hell with <laughs> it. Soft the game has gotten. Mm -hmm. Um, they're trying to ban the drop tackle, the hip drop, the hip drop tackle. I'm okay with that. Okay, so as a defensive player, how do you tackle? You can't hit high. You can't hit low. You can't. You can't horse collar. You can't hip drop. Now, if this is the thing. Now, this is the kick. If you if you watch, man, I say 
the first, the top four or five defensive tackles in the league uh, in the draft this year. What do they do? They swing tackle. Mm-hmm. No, you can't tackle because they don't pop. They don't. They 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 ride them down. They're all grabbing grabbing drags, which is pretty much a hip drop. So, how how do you hit as a defensive player now? You know, because you, if you lead with the head, if they think you lead with the head, if you jump jump into it, what do you do? You good, you're gonna have to take the legs out. They're gonna take that out next. You start blowing ACOs, you start breaking legs. They're gonna take that out next. So how? What do you do? You just start putting flags on their waist, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, right. Basically. And the thing is, as soon as the interception occurs, flag, whistle, because you can't. You can't. Get, I mean, what do you do? Well, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough situation in general to be in because as a sport, nobody wants. And really, I, I kind of hate saying it this way, but th- we have the Karens of the world to thank for this mm-hmm. because all of them are taking their sons out of football because these type of injuries scare the, yeah. you know, whatever out of them. So, the, would you say? I was saying, can't watch them. Oh yeah, um, but yeah. So you know, it, when they're when they're when they're sending their complaints in, and and the NFL sees you know, ratings in certain areas going down because of this and they see less children playing, you know, little league football. And, you know what I'm saying? The stuff like that is, is what the NFL is doing this for. Mm-hmm. But, but it's hurting all of us that grew up, you know, seeing the commercials with all the hard hits and stuff mm-hmm. that got advertised about this tough game yeah, and this do. hard hitting game. Like that's the stuff we get a rush on. And the craziest part to think about it, if they're, if they're in such a, they're up in arms about the hits and the, the physicality. Why are the pads getting smaller? Why are the helmets getting smaller? Why is everything getting smaller? But y- you complain. You know, there you can you can you know you come up with the Zenith helmets. You come up with the with the with the the, the Rydell the, the Revo helmet, which is an interesting one in itself. I used to wear it. My neck still hurts to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and 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 they 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 revolutionized the helmet. They revolutionized the pads. They revolutionized the, the, the thigh pads. And I'm not saying they got to all go out there and look like sweetness. They don't have to look like Walter Payton, look like uh, 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 Eric Dickerson with the goggles under there. But they actually had protection back in the day. They had protection. Who wears a neck Who wears a neck collar anymore? Nobody. Right. I mean, all they care about is having the sleeves. and the, You got a shooter sleeve. What are you shooting? This is football. <laughs> Why are you wearing a shooter sleeve? Why does this guy have one one sock up, no no sock? <laughs> this is a fashion show again. Allen Iverson, I blame you. No, I'm joking. But what, well, what, like, okay, so maybe you could explain this to me. What is the purpose of a shooter sleeve? There isn't any. Okay, there now, isn't I, any I thought there wasn't. You know, it's no. literally just for looks. It is. We probably have Deion Sanders to blame for this, <laughs> but but you know, nevertheless. And they outlawed the do rag. You know, the the, I think it's per- the bandana. You mean or yeah. the? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they they sneakily brought it back. Zach Wilson puts the, the little tie on and everything like that. But I mean, I I, I think I it's mainly because that it's that I think when when NBA players use the like like the shooting sleeves, it I think it helps. Like you know, helps you shoot the ball more more comfortably. I don't know how because because they basically they basically you know talked about uh, talked about why players well wear yeah those like I, I've I've seen some shooter sleeves that have like compression in in, in certain areas that yeah. might help with their mechanics or with their motion yeah or like that. and like, I think but yeah. those are like those are like specialized sleeves right yeah I mean the thing is yeah. like this I sat at my elbow when I was twelve. Mm-hmm. As you know, I can't straighten my arm out. You guys, now you're in on my little secret. My right arm does not. This is this is it. This is this is that's it. Um, Wait, for real? You can't really like you, you can't move with that like further further than that. It's literally impossible. It's 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 fixed. Yeah, it just won't go. I have oh, yeah. I, I, it, I have I have bones popping on. I'll show you later. But um, <laughs> when I play when I play after after I shattered my elbow, I had to have surgery to get all the bone fragment stuff up there. Though. But um, I used to wear a pad on my elbow. Mm-hmm. Then when I dislocated my knee, I wore a, just god awful knee brace. This thing was <laughs> hideous. <laughs> had this had to had to had the the, uh, the metal braces on the side. Yeah. I mean, this thing was like it was something out of the Patrick Ewing days. It was ridiculous. Oh jeez. So I had that, and it, like I'm just being weighed down. This is bulky. So the elbow thing, I'm like I'm protecting because if I hit somebody with this club, boy, I feel sorry for you. Matter of fact, I don't I know he's not watching, but if he does watch. I'm sorry, 
We were doing a drill. We were doing this is a drill in basketball. I'm just telling you, um, where basically you're, you're you're doing you're doing dribble drills. Okay. So you're dribbling from the corner to the to the to the to the box, back to the to the sideline, back in, and, and they're defending. It's a slide drill. Mm-hmm. Coach blows the whistle. You pick it up and you're defending. You know you're trying to keep it away. I accidentally elbowed in the mouth. All you heard was my tooth, right? Mm. So coach stops practice. Coach, this dude was nuts, but he stops practice. <laughs> And he's like, it's missing my tooth. Nobody could find his tooth. We we're all on the ground looking around. I look, it's stuck in my arm. Oh. His tooth is in my elbow. My club elbow, because I stopped wearing that brace, right? So, you know, fast forward, I got bad knees. Tendinitis, yeah, I needed a ten, I had a tendinitis strap. I had the, the brace. Mm. But none of this stuff was aesthetic. None of this stuff was was like, oh, I just I saw I saw I saw Sean Kemp wearing this, so I'm about to do it. Well, that's not because they didn't do it back then. <laughs> Sean I did. I saw you know. I saw. I saw Allen Iverson because I wasn't the guard, but people yeah. did that in one. Yeah, the headbands. Yep. Nobody's sweating, you know. But this is this is football. I'm bringing it back now. You got you got you got quarterbacks wearing gloves. Yep. You got. I mean, <laughs> for what? You know, you, there's no point. Because but, because look good, feel good, feel good, good, play, good, play, good, play, play, play good, play good, get paid good. Well, Zach Wilson must feel terrible. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, he's he's stealing them cougars like crazy. Man, he yeah. can't be all bad. Man, he, he, <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding, he I'm was kidding. a BYU cougar too. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, but uh, but no, we're going back to the point of of, of the the safety aspect. Mm-hmm. They're making everything smaller. They're they're, they're trying to re, they're trying to reduce collisions. They're trying to. But what did they do back in the seventies and sixties? And and they didn't have face mask. Right. They didn't have real helmet. They put that leather strap on your head to go hit somebody. Well, okay, so. Let's let's play devil let's let's play devil's advocate with our own point that we're making right now, right? How do you do that. I'm huh? so I'm so resolute right now. Go ahead. That, that's fine. That's, mm. that, that'd probably make for a good conversation. So so back in the day, mm-hmm. and even even you know back when we were growing up with football and, and you know in the nineties and two thousands. We're almost forty. That's back in the day now. Huh? We're almost forty. That's back in the day now. Uh, who, who's almost forty? We are. I, I don't know. I'll see you on your birthday, bro. I, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Listen, I just got to thirty. Ten years ago, huh? Ten years ago. No, nah, please. I, I don't was know there. What you're talking about? I was there. I, I'm almost thirty. <laughs> no, I'm no, almost there. No, no, you're almost thirty. You're almost thirty-nine. There. Right. He's thirty if you take the nine away. Um. Anyway, so what was your, what was your <laughs> deal with that, kid? <laughs> so I think the game was a lot slower back then too. And now, but okay. So because now I'm like contradicting no, myself in thought. In in theory, in theory, compared to today's game. Mm-hmm. The game that was played in the 70s, 80s, 90s was significantly slower than today's game, mm-hmm. right? Players are just faster. There's all this technology to help players, you know, work out better and run faster and be more athletic and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, on top of all the new n- nutrition stuff that, that they've been, you know, bringing out. Um, so with, <clears throat> with that being in place now, back then – Maybe they could get away with not having face masks because there weren't as many guys just flying around the field. But then I thought about this. Well, yeah, they might not have been flying around the field to us, but it still might have been a really fast game to them because they're all generally around the same speed. Also, you got to remember, back then you could do head slaps. You could punch a dude in the face. Yeah, see you that? Whatever you want. That's the crazy part. Like Now right. they're like, no, no, don't do it. Don't touch his face. Right. Right. Don't do it. And that's probably why they made the face mask the way right. they did, so they couldn't get blood. They're guys bringing their nose and going to the sideline smoking a cigar to get ease the pain. They're taking whiskey, easing the pain. Oh, my God. There was no there was no cortisone shots. They said, let me get a shot of whiskey. Why was I not born back then? Well, you, me. I, <laughs> my kidney be no good. My kidney would be horrible. I'd be like, yo, let's go play a game. Yeah, let's go play football let's go so play I can smoke football. a cigar and drink. So I can, so I can justify drinking a, a pint of whiskey. <laughs> this is right up my alley. I love this game. Oh, I'd have been in NFL right now. If that was the case. This this I <laughs> spiraled out of control. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it it I think it's it's starting to get to the point where just just play flag football and call it a day. It's already an Olympic sport now. It's Wait, blowing it up like crazy in youth leagues. It's, it's a Pro Bowl around. game. Huh? It's the Pro Bowl game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just make it that. Yeah. You know, and and, and <clears throat> there is a there is a there's a great upside to that from the standpoint of 
you know, the 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 connection that people get to have with basketball players when you watch a basketball game. You see in every expression, you see I hated that. <laughs> Why? Because I played basketball. You know, oh. you when you get served up, you don't want nobody to see your face. Yeah. You get you got somebody well, the the post is a lost start, but you get somebody hit you with that drop step, you like, man, I ain't had nothing for that. They can see it all in your eyes. Football, I got a dark enough visor, man, I can hide all that. I'm shaking in my boots right now, but they can't see it. Because my eyes tell the tailor, you can't see him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Listen, he had that mirror face mask, man. Shoot. Yeah. And he outlawed that when they had to unscrew your helmet when you when you blacked out. Yeah, it was weird. Right, right. The the other part of that though, like I can't see having these big old stadiums, and then you march a bunch of dudes in t shirts and, and waist flags. That'd out be there. fire. <laughs> like every, <laughs> That'd be seriously fire. though, seriously though, every single stadium would have to have a dome on it. It would you would just have to Not just play in yeah. arenas at that. Yeah, because there's nothing to keep them warm. Right. The players would be shaking. I think got shorts. They, Right. be no good. I, Too much skinny you clothes. You can't justify Because you saw the Kansas yeah. City game, the, the, the cold game, that everybody was, was lauding. I who they play in that, in that game, the, the, the frozen tundra? Was that Miami? The Chiefs? Yeah. Who yeah, they play? They play yeah. Miami. You yeah. saw, like, what did they say? Six people had to have something amputated? Six fans or something like that had to have something amputated for sitting out there at that stadium. What? Yeah. Yep. Okay. L- listen. <laughs> if you think for one second, that they put on the news is going to be 24 below? Well, we know you ain't going. I I, I don't understand. I don't understand <laughs> the person that does go. That's that's tough. The one that takes his shirt off when he do that's that. That's what I'm saying. That's tough. Like, for Fitz to come here during the, the zero degree game, the playoff game against the Patriots, to take his shirt off. Well, I mean, he was orange, though, because he was sitting under the, under the heater. So that was his little cop out. But he was still here. He I was can't still here. See it. I can't see it. I mean, I that's extreme for me. And I told you, I, I appreciated that game where uh, where I could barely get to the stadium. Oh, my gosh. I, th- these rule changes, are, are they're, they're ruining the game. They're ruining the game. And that's just rule change number one. I, was, I have ten of them. Ten? Yeah. Well, this is okay. proposals. I just want to get your get your idea on, let's see, can this see chief amputations? Uh, Amputees? Well, I just remember I saw multiple chief fans – have had amputations due to frostbite after their fourth coldest game. Yeah, so I, it does. I, yeah, so uh, I might not. I might have been presumptuous with six, but yeah, I know it's multiple. Um, Jeez. Yeah, that's that's dedication. At least your team won the Super Bowl. That was sucked if you went out there and they lost. And oh man, and you lost your, your fingers or whatever too. What's up, Solomon? Yeah, that is wild. <laughs> he said that's wild. Lol. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Onside kick alternate. You ready for this one? Yep. After scoring in the fourth quarter, teams have the alternate kick, alter, alternative to kick off, attempt to get onside kick. Instead, they can run one offensive play from their 25-yard line. If they gain 15 yards or more, they can retain possession. I love this. That would be fun to watch. I love this. I would love to see that. There's so much drama But in Josh Allen can't play. scramble it, though. Huh? Josh Allen can't scram- scramble it, though. Why not? Just because it's unfair. What? No! <laughs> that, that, you, stop! Stop! If we're trying to get this passed, you can't do life. that, huh? If we're trying to get this passed, you can't do that. That's biased. Okay. Who who proposed this rule? Uh, this is just stuff that this is. These are ideas that were kicked around. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are ideas that kicked around that, that so, they think would make from the XFL to make the NFL better. Well, they did make Sean McDermott part of the uh, competition committee now. Yes, they did. So you yes, know, they just did. Sweep that on inside the door there. Mm-hmm. Let's get that going. We talked about the multiple, multiple options after the touchdown, so we did that. Yep. Speeding up the game. Okay. 35-second play clock. Speakers allowed in the helmets of all offensive skill players. 10 minutes. <laughs> all right. So, obviously, ours is 40 seconds. The speakers only allowed in the helmet of the quarterback or linebacker. Uh, XFL has a 10-minute halftime. NFL has a 12-minute halftime. Proposed rules outside looking in. These are these are all proposed. Well, it's, it's, these are – they're really not even proposed. These are these are like I said. These are rules that that uh, people think would make the NFL better if they adopted oh, okay. some XFL okay. rules. So th- this was an article you found. Or? Yeah, this okay. is on ESPN. Gotcha. Um, I agree. I think. I mean, it, it's it, what what makes it tough though is in the two minute drills. Well, I, yeah, yeah. And I and I get that you know having the having the speaker in every helmet, but. 
like who's going to be communicating with who. You know what I mean? Like that that's kind of what makes it tough because if you are if you're a running back, mm-hmm. like in a 2 minute drill when you when you hurrying up and lining up, like there's there's tons of things that you that you can do or or mm-hmm. have to do on any on any given play. You could be blocking, you could be on a on a, a a delayed route, you could be you know what I'm saying? Like there's so much stuff to consider. You would kind of need your own uh, running backs coach to be able to kind of give you your your keys on on you know whatever play. Right. Yeah. And I was looking to see while you're talking. I was just looking to see if there was any kind of exclusion, like like you said, a two minutes uh, two minutes before halftime or end of the game. But I don't see anything. <laughs> Solomon said, "I would not want old line men with speakers." <laughs> 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 I don't even think they could have it. I mean, for as much collision as they take on a regular basis, would that speaker even survive? I mean. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> can you imagine if one of them goes out and all of a sudden your right tackle just goes He's out for no reason. He's all pulling for no reason. Like, right. Why are we pulling? <laughs> oh, I, my, my speaker was breaking up. I, I you thought know. it was Russell Wilson back there. Never right. mind. Right. Um, let's ride. <laughs> Stop with this let's ride. So he's gone from Colorado already. Yeah, but now, now it's still City. Let's ride. What? Let's ride. Steeler Nation. Let's ride. There what is go. wrong with both of you? You know we have same accord. Huh? Yeah, we, I we know. Be here. We be right here. That's, that's that's why I'm looking over there. Like, why did you even bring this up? Because now you're gonna be seeing that the rest of the episode. Let's ride. Right. Jeez. Let's ride. Right. Let's ride. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> XFL games in 2020 average about two hours and 50 minutes, uh, as opposed to our games, which is which are t- typically about uh, 15, 20 minutes longer. Um, okay. Replay reviews on penalties. XFL XFL you can replay reviews on penalties. So, <coughs> ref calls holding. You don't think it's holding? You can throw the flag. And say I don't think it's holding. Review it. Review that. Hmm. NFL. You know how many more of these flags? Like these coaches are gonna run out of flags. Oh, oh. McDermott be like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, sucker. You understand how offended these refs are gonna be? Which God brings- damn it! It's the <laughs> tenth call you didn't challenge. What the hell is your problem with me? Which brings me to my next point. <laughs> Television broadcasts routinely tap into the microphones of referees to hear their deliberations. They also air Blandino's re- re- uh, oh, replay this. reviews and in some cases return to Blandino to further explain the call. Can you explain? Hey, Ralph, why'd you blow the flag? Are you kidding me, Freddie? He was giving him the business. Okay. This will never happen. <laughs> this he was will giving him the never business. happen. Let me tell you, this will never happen. You know it won't because they're not watching the game. They're like, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Accountability uh. with refs? What is that? They're like, ah. Uh. Right, I nope. got to throw something. My hat, nope. something. Nope. Oh, God. Listen, I- I'm going to break it to everybody watching the show right now. There will never be the kind, of, the kind of accountability that we're all looking for in the NFL game because whenever there isn't, it is the most talked about thing in the news the next following week or the next day or whatever. They get so much publicity off of these bad calls that – it, it, it's it, it's almost as if it's its own football game. It's its own event for the NFL. They get so much publicity off of it. They, they they make so much money off of that. Why change it? Well, I'll take it even a step further. This is why you can't do that. The NFL is a, is a multi billion dollar uh, industry. Okay. And I don't know. Well, obviously you you don't know because you you probably didn't watch the Sabres game. I watched where there was about to be a, a fight brewing. It was after a penalty. You know how they scuffle. And the ref skates in as fast as he can. Break it. Like, relax, relax. I have been got him. And he's on. He's on a hot mic. I have been got him. I got him. Imagine that on ABC on a Sunday, or I'm sorry, NBC on a Sunday, CBS on a Sunday, where somebody's cur- a ref is cursing up a storm, or for, God forbid, a hot mic picks up somebody say the N word. You know what happens? You know well, what kind they, of lawsuit? Can, what kind of things would, would come about that? Yeah, but I mean, they they would be smart about it. They could they could do a two second delay like they do on live TV shows. Where yeah, they but just dump if stuff. you have every ref has a has a, a mic, there's there's that risk that something might pop. That's true. You know, but, you, but like if they're if they're if they're going to do that though, I imagine they're going to have a talk with the refs. Like, look, you guys could be what, hot at any time. So. It don't have to be a, a ref though. It could be a player walking by, <laughs> a player in the heat of the moment. Don't care what he says. If a ref if a ref calls you a hold in a, in a crew, dude, <laughs> think about what do you think they say? He's right. you, how many times have you seen a ref like hurry up and switch his mic off because he heard something? <laughs> said, you always see it. Hey, shut the click. <laughs> <laughs> you like yo? Let me highlight you for a second. Put it and then turn it off. And <laughs> you know, uh, McDermott's cursing up a storm to the to the, the line judge, or you know, and these are things that can't happen. And XFL is, is not a multi billion dollar corporation where guys don't take it. 
I'm not going to say don't take it as seriously, but there's a level <laughs> of professionalism and a level of we already know what to expect. Right. Versus the NFL where, you know, you go through seminars and classes and all these things where guys are told and told and told what they can and can't say and can't do and can't spin and can't. It's crazy. I don't know. Did you see the, the uh, just to, to drive the point home, did you see, I don't even know if it was hard knocks or what, but it was it was Tyreek Hill. And he was stretching and setting third. You know, he was, he, had a, he, had a, he was mic'd up. And, you know, the refs come through and they say, you know, hi to everybody. He was like, hey, Hill. He was like, what's up, Blair? He was like, hey, uh, just so you know. No peace signs today. What? He's like, come on, man. Like, can I just do? They're like, no. He's like, come on. What about? They're like, mm mm. He's like, man, come on. Oh, all right. But see, that's the kind of stuff they have conversations with before the game. So, what if that was a bet somebody made? <laughs> like, I'm gonna make sure Tyreek Hill don't throw no peace sign because I just made this four billion dollar bet. Billion dollar bet. I, I have in my pockets. No, don't do it. Wow. Mm-mm. I think it was right after he got fined for it. He got fined for it the week previous, and then the ref was walking through the, the, the stretching lines, and they're like, yeah, you, you know. Somebody so. always whining about something. <laughs> it, it, it never fails. It never fails. It, we're, we're in the day and age where everybody has to be equal, still and yet nobody appreciates the, the equality that they have. or nobody. I, I should say it this way. Nobody appreciates competition for what it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not even competition anymore. If everybody's the same, then how, how do right. we how do we claim a winner? Turning the turning the uh, the speed threshold all the way to a hundred on Madden. Hey, I used to do that. You just, just slow down. Did you really? Huh? Did you really to, put a hundred to to make everybody the same? Yeah. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I'm thinking about it before I find out what that about that setting. Yeah. And I have I don't know. CJ Spiller. This is this is back then. I used to think that turning it up to a hundred did what it does. Yeah, at it did zero. zero. But no, the thing is, when I got CJ Spiller in the, in the flat and Warren Sharp hawks me, or not Warren Sharp, Warren Sap yeah. hawks me. You know how infuriated I was. You know how mad I was when Lee Evans couldn't catch up to Brian Urlacher. Listen, do you know how hard it is to juke somebody when they got the when they're when they're a defensive lineman and they got the same speed as a, a ninety five overall running yeah. running back. And I know it drove you mad because you got you're all about speed and all this stuff. Yeah. You're like, yo, he's a ninety seven. Like, Mm-mm-mm, why they matter. can't get separation? That's when I started learning about like how to how to pick guys that had you know the agility and better route running <laughs> and stuff like that. Because it, it, I mean, the technical stuff made a difference. But that's what I had. That's why. See, when I played, you, I used to get guys that had a high awareness <laughs> and, and uh, tackling. What you got? Um, Solomon came up with a good point for the uh, for the challenges. He said uh, the only problem I have with that is it'll slow the game down. It's a, it, it, it's it's a valid point. It's a good point because there. But I think I don't think they have as many challenges. I, I think they have they. Well, they only had what two, three, four. They, or, I think, no, they get, I think they get. I think they get two. I think yeah, they, they just they have had two. the standard the two. It was just huh? the NFL gets three if you get the first two right. Right, right. So with with this adjusted rule or pro- proposed rule, they would still get the same amount of challenges. It's just uh, they can challenge more stuff. That's, I gotta go back to it. I don't, I, you know, because I thought about that and I think it did address something about that. I I would think to a degree they would have to give them at least one more challenge flag. If you're opening up all these different things that can be challenged now, and you can just challenge whatever the ref says, I, I need one more at that point. Coaches issue. Can issue one challenge per per game of an officiating decision. Oh, so they can do on top of the two that they already have. No, you get you get two total. But I think but one of them, one of, one of them can two. be an officiating decision. The other one can be, yeah. So like a penalty that's, or something like that. That's risky. But like I said, the XFL games are faster. So <laughs> even though it sounds like it's longer, the helmets and the and the, the kickoffs and the, yeah, because the, so these are already rules that 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 are in the XFL. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, if their play clock is lower and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, it mitigates it. So, yeah, their games are actually faster. So, if you're paying $200 to watch a Bills game, you're not going to be happy because the game is not as long unless, like my comrade over here, he doesn't want to sit in the cold, um, you know, get in, get out. That makes it way better for me. Man, I paid this money. I'm trying to get here. I never leave. I just sit there and wait <laughs> and wait I mean, more. like, so – I, I'm I'm trying to resist the temptation to get into what I want to talk to just just yet. okay okay no 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 okay but, okay all right because uh, you you've like touched on it twice already now but uh but let's let's keep going what else you got okay so <clears throat> I don't know who knows but I didn't see 
the list of players that the Bills talked to at the combine. Okay. And this this feeds into my next point. Now I'm just gonna run them, run them down real quick. Uh, get this out of here. Wide receivers, <laughs> they talked to everybody. Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman, Tez Walker, Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas, Jalen McMillan, Adnai Mitchell. Uh, yes, it's Adnai, not Adane. I hear a lot of people say Adane. A lot of people, they, they're trying too hard. It's Adnai. That's it. Uh, Xavier Leggett, Roman Wilson, and Johnny Wilson. Uh, oh, running they talked to Johnny Wilson? They talked to Johnny Wilson. Ooh. Running backs. Frank Gore Jr. <laughs> Didn't they talk to him when his dad played for the team? Wasn't he, wasn't he here somewhere? They could have talked to him then. It, we're not going full circle. I here. should have just pulled it up on my phone. That was terrible. Um, <laughs> so, Frank Gore Jr., Audrey Estime, and Braylon Allen, who, if we had to take one, I'll take Braylon Allen. But, um, offensive line, they only talked to three guys. And one of these guys, I know the other two, I, pff, I don't. Okay. Um, Graham Barton, which is a guy, he's, he's very, he's very, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, polarizing, because he plays left tackle with a high clip with Duke. However, there's a lot of scrutiny about his arm length. See, I feel like if I don't you even can think do they're it, gonna draft an offensive lineman now. I think they will, just not that high. Really? Yeah, just not that high. I think they're gonna go like in the in the uh, the bane of the Alec Anderson and the bane of the the the, 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 the Luke Tenuta's that kind of deal, where it's like sixth or seventh round. Um, there's so the reason why I say that because I ran through a mock draft. As long there's as it's not so another six eight guy, like can I just get a regular size dude that can actually play? What's regular? Like six six, six, six four six five. Can, like can I can six, I get six? that kind? Huh? Six six regular. I'm average. I dude. sit. I sit. Huh? I'm average size. You're okay. average size. Moving on to the uh, let's see defensive line. You I think are, you just you went through a, a bunch jo- of reasons why you're not average. <laughs> you got an elbow that, go, that don't go the right <laughs> way. You get right. <laughs> knees bad. Elbow. I a. Right. Hey. Hey. Now defensive line: Byron Murphy, Braden Fist, Javon Solomon, and Jalex Hunter. Uh, Jalex Hunt. I'm sorry. So obviously everybody knows Braden Fist, the combine darling. Um, I have seen this guy going as, 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 to Buffalo a couple of times in, in the second round, and I can see it happening. Um, you know, everybody they're up in arms about about defensive tackles and who we got to get. You know, I told, I texted you what was it yesterday about the the guy that they, that that Daquan Jones tweeted out about from the Chargers, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but rest assured, we're good. We'll get another defensive tackle, maybe two. And there's a lot of them that will actually be available in undrafted, undrafted free agency. So if they don't draft one, don't lose your your uh, mess. Oh, believe me, I won't. Because I, I, I was not trying to draft one anyway. We got a couple of questions really quick. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, actually, a comment from outside looking in. He goes, I, I hate the fact the refs can be game planned against in the team's favor. For example, if the refs have tendencies to not call certain penalties, a team will attack it as if it's the opponent's weakness. I think – it, it, now, mind you, I, I agree with you. I, I I think the other side of this, though, is being upset at that is the equivalent to being upset at the dude that goes to the sample table at, at the Walmart and takes like 17 of them joints. No, no, nah, Gallery of Mall, that shiny chicken. Huh? The Gallery of Mall where they had a shiny chicken on a toothpick. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you just, just keep walking back and forth. <laughs> just taking all the free joints. The lady looking at you funny every time. <laughs> but she got to hand you, you one because if she don't, she might get fired. That, uh, that's how you do it. Oh, let me try it. That's and a he, free meal right there. Like, you always stop. You look at the menu. You be like, <laughs> no. What you do is you go to another restaurant. You get a napkin or a plate, and you just keep walking past the lady, and don't even take it and put it in your mouth. You just take it and put it on the plate, and you keep walking past her, and putting them all on the plate. Wait, you hey, got dinner. No, for you free, got dinner. You right good. All you need some of that, some of that chow mein. You want let me some of that chow mein? We all set. <laughs> right. I'm gonna get some of that off. Oh, uh, but yeah, I you know, okay. Like I said before, the the NFL doesn't want to mess with the refs. They 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 love the drama that comes from these ref calls. They love all of that, right? Mm-hmm. So so, you know, while while it is something that you know I, I can't I can't stand anything that has to do with the refs in the game. Period. Because it, it's it there's no accountability to it. These guys don't get fired for making a bad call. A player can get fired for. I don't know having having a warrant out for his arrest. Absolutely, you, you know what I'm saying. Or or if he if he has too many you know dirty hits in a game, he can get fined. Absolutely. Do the refs get fined? Not at all. The worst that happens to a ref 
is they don't get to call they don't get to call games in the playoffs or they don't get to call the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think that's one of the contentions why they're not why they're not full time employees because they can't if they're a full time employee and, and, and not a subsidiary man they think about it. Right when they when they when they control that game check and they can do what they want with them yeah yeah, yeah game one they won't they'll never do it yeah so let's start encouraging these owners to uh, you know hire some full time refs and then maybe we'll see a little bit more accountability maybe that makes it a little bit better. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that is something that I think should be pushed for. Mm -hmm. Um, Solomon has a good question. He goes, um, do you think it's a high chance we go defense in the first round? Please, no. Yes. Solomon, yes. Yes. And honestly, (laughs) stick with us because I I, I have some thoughts on that as well. Yeah, the the more more they they keep making these moves, like the Bills got the clap now. We won't talk about that. Too. <laughs> the Bills we got won't the talk about now. that. I don't know if y'all heard, but they just signed this dude from uh, from. Yeah, LA. you said it right. This dude. Yeah. Jag. Yeah. Jag clap. Just, just a guy. Just a guy clap. And oh, I thought about this. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go no. Go ahead. I thought about this when 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 I heard about the signing. It like it took me like maybe ten minutes to uh, ten minutes, ten seconds to come to this thought. This dude played on the L.A. Chargers line last year. We destroyed their offensive line last year, didn't we? Yeah. And before the game, like leading up leading up to that game that week, all they talked about was how bad the offensive line was. That's how they keep getting uh, Justin Herbert injured. Right. So yeah. this is the guy we want. This is the 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 veteran, you know, can play multiple positions. We do this, this now? Okay. Okay. Let me scroll down here. <laughs> he, about to, he about to go off. <laughs> Solomon, we will, I promise you, we'll, we'll get right back, back to that point because it, it, it is. I'm, what was Solomon's point again? You just so, took it to a dark yeah, place. Yeah, before we get to clap, before we get to clap, <laughs> we got to address this defensive okay. th- uh, defense in the first round of the draft. Well, well, okay. This this is the reason why I said we'll get to that because I actually had I had that was actually one of the, one of the points I wanted to talk about today. Okay, go ahead. So we'll 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 let me just finish this article and then then we'll go into that. Okay. Uh, if that's all right, if that's all right, give me a, give me a clap. Um, <laughs> you said trust Romer. <laughs> So defensive back, Cooper DeJean, Kamari Lasseter, Javon Bullard, Cameron Kitchens, Kalen Bullock, and MJ Devonshire were all uh, guys the Bills were, were linked to at the combine. Uh, obviously, there's some notable names that, that you don't hear, but rest assured, as we did our, our homework uh, in previous years, if you watched one of our very early shows, I talked about it, but I'll say it again. We don't always draft anybody we talk to. Right. Sometimes, sometimes the person that we draft is not somebody that comes into our, 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 our facility or somebody that, that we talk to in the, uh, the combine constructs. Case in point, year one, three of our, our first year uh, draft picks were, were visits to, to Carolina and not <laughs> Buffalo. Deion Dawkins, Zay Jones. Um, they never came to Buffalo for visits and, and they went to Carolina. So I wonder how that happened. <laughs> um, but getting into, into, into uh, Solomon's point, do you want to do that? Well, do you want to do that now, or you want to talk about your, your the first round? Do you want to do that now, or do you want to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, your yeah. We can okay. talk about the, the okay. defense in the first round. The reason why I said I was going to hold off a second because I knew you, you had something you really want to talk about. But in my mind, the question I had for for today was, what do these signings mean for the draft? Yeah, and, and I think that's a that's a unfortunately, Solomon. I think all of what's happened now lends to. They're gonna. They're they're going to draft it. I I think it's it's. If it's not Tavondre Sweat, and <laughs> is that why you highlighted all no, that? No, no, no. Oh, no, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, no. if it's if it's not Tavondre Sweat, it's it it might be a pass rusher. Unfortunately, unfortunately. <sighs> Uh, it it might be a chop Robinson. It might be. I mean, I hate the thought of doing something like that for for you know drafting a pa- another pass rusher in the first round. I hate that. What I like to wait, Andre wait, Sweat. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean another? Oh, you you trying to be funny? We took one, Ed yeah. Oliver. That's the only pass rusher they ever took in the first round. What about Group? Like I said, <laughs> Ed Oliver is the only pass rusher they ever took in I the didn't first round. Stutter, because because like, let's let's be real, let's be real. Like we talked about, and and the guys are really been rocking with us. They know how I feel about this. Greg Russo, you are Shaq Lawson on steroids. You are a run stuffer. 
you are a guy that's going to get manufactured sacks. You are going to guy. You're going to be a guy that's, that's never going to threaten for more than I'll be generous eight sacks in a season. Mm. I, if he ever gets double digit sacks, that's because our secondary is, is light. So we got the second coming of no fly zone. So he's Chris Kelsey basically. I, let me just let me just go with let me go with Shaq Lawson because Chris Kelsey. That's I don't know where he got, but I don't know why he was here well, so long. Well, I mean, he was he was a he was a six to eight sack a year guy when yeah. he was the guy. Like after Aaron Schobel left, those two years that we that yeah. Chris Kelsey became the guy yeah. only because our best pass rusher left. Now all of a sudden we had to scramble and find somebody to crown as our number one pass yeah. rusher, and it had to, just happened to become the guy who was our number two pass rusher at the time. No, I I really I, I can see this. <laughs> I think Greg Russo is going to be a guy that that will make his mark uh, tackles for loss. So I think he's going to be a perennial fifteen to fifteen or so tackle for loss guy. Um, Especially when they get the other the other guy next to him sorted out, especially you know when he's when he's next to uh, um, Ed Oliver or somebody like that when they flush him to to Rousseau's side, yeah. um, or if you get a linebacker that that stays contained and forces him back to Rousseau. So those are the things that you really have to worry about. You have to worry about your cornerbacks, who's going to be outside, will they put their nose in the, in the run game? That's 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 part number one. Um, but I think I think they really. I'm not going to say they're going to go defense. I'm not going to say they're going to go offense. But what I'm going to say is I highly doubt they're trading up for anybody in the first round now. They're just going to let whoever it is fall to them. So if it's if it's, if it's Brian Thomas Jr., which I've seen him go as high as 11 now. Um, so the Bills are not trading up to 19. They're not trading up to 15. They're not trading up that high and giving up those kind of you assets. I think so. I mean, they traded up almost every year. They never trade up that much. They trade up maybe two picks. You know, but to, you're talking about trading them to the top ten. I don't well, know. Well, they they did for Josh Allen. That was the biggest. Well, that was that was a that multi. Yeah, did. that was a multi component deal. Yeah. But I think um, <clears throat> this year for for a pass rusher, they're gonna. There's too many there. There's there's too many guys that they can work with. Uh, offensive, you know, line. You got you got uh, 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 Cromer, who's worked his magic. Mm-hmm. I've seen I've seen Van Pran go in the second round. Um, you know, what's, what's the guy's name? Uh, 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 Jackson Powers Johnson. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he goes to, to, to the Bills at, at 28, if he's still there at 25, they might trade up for him because I don't think yeah, they feel good about the center at all. Even 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 offensive line is not that strong in this draft this year. That's what I'm saying. See, that is something that if, you, if you're inclined, you have to trade up for that kind of thing. But, right. But, but I don't think they're going to – Huh? Th- doesn't it – it's tough. Like – and I'm not trying to equate my my Madden days to the actual NFL, <laughs> but just just to just to set the setting of of my thought process, I think if you're if you if you go in and you look at what players are in the draft, mm-hmm. and all you're seeing at the top of this draft is this thing is heavy wide receiver, mm-hmm. this thing is heavy skill players in general. Mm-hmm. Right, um, all of the linemen are in. Eh, you know, you got you got a few linebackers here and there that that are in. Eh, you know what I mean? You got a few defensive linemen that 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 are, you know, that that can turn out to be some pretty good starters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But overall, in general, every position except for corner, running back, and wide receiver are basically trash. <laughs> I'm not going to do too much scouting of all the, the, the defensive line. Why even bother with that? Like, I, I understand you got to do your, your due diligence to some degree, mm-hmm. right? But I'm going to focus on the strength of, uh, of the draft, and I'm going to focus my free agency on everything else well, the that the I, draft isn't. The way I look at it is like this. If you if you got a Curtis Samuel, that tells me right there you're, you're not, you're not going to sell the firm for um, – you know Brian Thomas Jr. or somebody like that. You right. you can you can go for a lab on Conky or somebody like that. Hey, you could go for you know if you really like if you I don't but if you like Troy Franklin, if you really like Adnai Mitchell, one of them is going to be there at at, at twenty five or so. So trade them to the three picks to, for the, one of those guys depending on how it falls. Fine, but I don't think I don't see a world where in a, a draft where you have you have uh, Jalen Polk, you got uh, 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 Javon Baker's, you got uh, Tr- uh, Jermaine Burton's, you got. All these guys and later on, that are good enough. You yeah. know, you're, they're they're just fine. And, and this is not a this is not a, a year where I'm like, oh, we're settling. These guys are guys I could see being a number two receiver in the league. Right. You know, so I I, I don't think 
coupled with the fact that they that they they sold out on 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 Samuel and Matt Hollins and, and guys like that, I don't think they're they're as desperate as they once were to take that wide receiver. Um, <laughs> yeah, these comments are rolling. I know. Uh, uh, re- really quick, let go me, ahead, let go me ahead. Blitz right through these. Um, don't blister them. Give them time. Give them time. Steve. Respect them. Put some, okay. All stay right. on your business. <laughs> I'm 10 toes down on these comments <laughs> as I'm about to cry. Um, Steve Steve writes in, uh, if McDermott is such a defensive genius like some fans think, we don't need to draft uh, defense early, draft a wide receiver uh, early and often. I, I forgot I agree Steve loved McDermott. Uh-huh. I forgot Steve loved McDermott. <laughs> Steve, Steve, listen, listen. That's me so, that's me so, and Steve, we, we about to start trading text in a minute. Gotta, I, yeah. I might have to. Huh? Have same spirit animal. Yeah. That, <laughs> Right, we do. Y'all we do. do. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that's a great point. I think, you know, with, with what we saw last year and what he was able to do with, you know, average players and backups, there's there's no question. You have to you have to now invest in the offense. I've been saying this the whole offseason. Your offense has to be your dominant side this year. And it can't just be you trying to, you know, have balance like you did before because you had you had, you know, great offensive players and an entirely great defense. Right now, it's you got to have an entirely great offense and get some good defensive players. You have a few. Let's mm-hmm. see if you can get some more free agency in the draft. That's what it needs to be. Yeah. Um, but but obviously, they're not thinking like that. They're trying to make everything balanced. Getting a guy like Mike Edwards and pairing him with with Taylor Rapp, that is probably going to be a slight step down from Poyer and Hyde you know in what? terms of their capabilities. I ain't going to argue, but I'm not here saying Mike Edwards is a starter. Not doing it. What? Not doing it. How can you? Not doing it. Not How can you it. say that? How can you say that? I'm not doing it. So so you think, you think McDermott is really going to let Kitchens come in there and just start over any, any one of those dudes? Might not be Kitchens. What if the gene, what if the gene falls to him? What if, what if? Who is the gene going to start over? Who would he start over? No, Dejean, no, 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 no. Cooper no, Dijon. You, you have to answer my question. Cooper first. Dijon. Who is he going to start over? Mike Edwards for certain. For certain, Mike Edwards. If he falls at twenty eight, there's no way he's going to start. You putting money on that? I would. What? I would. He's standing. Okay, on we're not talking about you choosing to 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 put these players in there. We're talking about McDermott choosing yeah. to put these players in. There. Mike Edwards signed a one year deal. That don't tell me a lot of faith. He's, he's signed a one-year deal. Yeah, but it, it's insurance it, that Cam Lewis doesn't play. That's what it is. It's insurance that Mar Hamlin don't play. That's what it is. Okay, I could see how you could see that. I could see how how that could be a perspective of the situation. But the reason he got he got a one-year deal is not specifically to keep Cam Lewis off the field. They why, they love Cam Lewis. Why didn't off. they sign? Why didn't they sign uh, Justice Blackman? Justin Blackman. <laughs> No, Justice. Justin Blackman is the white receiver that's that that failed out of the league. The guy from India, the Indy safety. He, his his name is Justin. I thought it was Justice. It's it's J U S T I N. You sure? I am about a hundred percent sure. A hundred percent. Just okay, about. I'll take your word then. Just about. Um, Just look it up. <clears throat> oh my gosh, these these comments are rolling. Okay, I got to get to this. So uh, <laughs> Solomon says your old, your O line is weak in the draft. Yeah, I mean exactly. Like yeah. Steve is saying, you know, uh, offensive tackle is deep in this draft, uh, but not top tier. I agree with that 100. percent Pass rusher is not a uh, not an elite class. Pretty average class. Mm-hmm. Again, wholeheartedly agree with mm-hmm. that. One of the reasons why you have to focus on the skill positions. Um, Melly Mack is in the house. He said, keep in, uh, keep in mind we have 11 picks. I can't see us actually picking 11 guys. Mm-hmm. Plus, they not all uh, they all not making the squad anyway. They will have to draft. Uh, I think he meant trade up. You forget. <clears throat> Just you forget. don't know which rounds. You forget. We don't have a third round pick. We got, there, no, we don't. Why not? Why do we? C- compensatory. No, we lost it. How? Because Tremaine, that Tremaine Evans, it, it goes to a fourth. We have three fourths, not, not a third. We still don't have a third. We lost it. They, I, yeah. I'm confused. How? Because it's fluid. It wasn't promised. So so okay. So so is it because of the deal he signed? We or? signed no. He his deal was good, but we we signed somebody. We lost it. That's the big news. You didn't. Oh hear? really? Yeah, we lost it. Who did we sign to mess it up? I don't even know. Uh, who who's a good? <laughs> did the it? Bills know this was going to mess it up? Yeah, I mean we still got a fourth out of it, so they could. But see, this is the thing. 
the Bills they they don't they don't get that that aggressive in the first the first round. They get aggressive in the second. They always get aggressive in the second. So I can see them trade up into the, the high second. I can see them trading back. Wait, when you say aggressive, how? Aggressive how? Like trading up, you know, because they, they traded up off. they traded up for Cody Ford. It was it was a bunch That's of second players. round. No, second round. I know. They traded for T J Graham. They traded up for Cody Ford. They traded up for Deion Dawkins. They trade up in the second round like like every year. But okay. but uh, the first round, you you don't see them usually making that aggressive move, that Julio Jones type move. I can see them going five picks up or something like that in the first round. But I but going from twenty eight to ten, like the inverse of what happened when, we, when Mahomes got picked and we took Trey, mm-hmm. I don't see us being on the other end of that. That's what I'm saying. But I can see I can see a world where they package something to get that that third round back. I can see a world where they package something and get a second, another second or a higher second. I can see. I mean, I can see that. So I, I know they're not going to use eleven. I'd say eight, maybe, maybe eight. Uh, unless they pick up something in a trade, you know, where they, they trade like a two fifths and, and a six for a third, and they get a seventh or something like that. Yeah. I can see that, but I mean, it's just murky. But yeah, no, we, I, yeah, um, that might. I, I did, I did my numbers. I did some numbering on that guy, and I, I just, I don't see it. Everybody, you know, I, I, I don't. Okay. All you right. Know, where, where are we at? Let me, let uh, me just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, com- comments are rolling like crazy. I'm so far behind. Uh, okay, so well, well, so well, step your game up. Uh, step mean, my we, game. You, we will not talk. I don't, if have, I'm just, I don't have nothing on my screen. Where is my screen? Okay. Don't do right. it. Uh, don't do wait, it. No, wait, don't do whatever you said. Okay for don't do it. I, I'm, I'm I can sorry. Set you up. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can put my phone out and do an old school. But there nah. you go. There yeah. you go. It's All right. So so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm trying to make this quick. I must no. No, I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna wait. We're gonna be here all night. Don't you gotta go? Well, we still got some time. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, I love this show. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, Steve writes in, are we really going to have JA17 go eight years without the Bills drafting one first round, first round wide receiver? Not one? For real? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I think I think the Curtis Samuel signing does that. Um, Melly Mack, I know you don't necessarily agree with that. <laughs> um, and, that and that's... Like that that's the thing. Like I, I I am holding out hope that they do do it. Cause I like I'm I'm with Mac. I want them to do it. I just based on what oh, I've geez. seen from yeah. their habits, I don't think they're going to. That's the same thing. I want them to do it, but right. I, I I don't think just knowing how they operate. Yeah. Because Bean, what does Bean do? He fills in the team. Yep. So he can draft whatever the best player available. And when they say that, that tells you I'm not re well, I don't want to say reach because that's that's an assault to the guy that they could potentially get. Right. But in their eyes, I don't need to trip to, to, to 13. I don't need to trip to 15 because I'm already set there. Can I improve somewhere? Sure. But I don't want to miss out on the best player available. What does that mean? It means we don't have a Super Bowl up to now. So you tell me what that really does for you. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Melly Mac asks, uh, he said, ask Key if he's going to eat his words if Edward is not the starter. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Mm-mm. Okay. No, listen, I, just, I don't listen. see it. I just you don't want, see it. You like want to put said, some wings on that? No, because well, I, I mean, how can you do that? Because if he's not the starter, that means we didn't draft somebody. To me, I think my like I I, I solidly think my Edwards is on this team, so, so that Cam saying, Lewis and Demar Hamlin don't start. So That's you're seriously saying if I think Mike here. Edwards starts, that means we didn't draft somebody to replace him to 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 be a starter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In other words, I'm thinking that, that that if Mike Edwards starts, they're not drafting. They're, you won't see a safety off the board before the fifth round. I just think. He's been in two Super Bowls with the Chiefs, and it's a tough year for the Bills cap-wise, and they saw an opportunity to get a guy with that pedigree that has played the game at, at you know, at the highest level. I mean... You... <sighs> I don't. I don't. Again, I my, Mike Edwards is not this dude that I'm that I'm looking at and saying like, you know. He's got to be the, you know, the starter. I, I I'm, think I'm he's, there with you. I think I think he's one of those guys that just happens to have a nose for the ball, but he's not he's not elite in any particular kind of way at all. Know? Right. So, you know, I mean, it, it's I I I, it's, I struggle with, and that's the best I can come up with. I right. a one year deal, five ten two oh five, twenty eight year old guy, third round. He only started one season. He. Really, what did he have? What, what did we say he had? He had two interceptions in 2022, the year he started. Uh, 2023, he had one. He's 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 not graded out good in anything. Yeah. So I mean, 
he's got the starting experience. But I don't think that this guy is a the guy they brought in and said, you're our new guy that's going to that's gonna hold down a Poyer role or hold down a Hyatt role. I think he's a stopgap. If they don't get the guy that they want, they got him. But if they get, I don't know, I don't, like I said, Cooper Dijon, because he's not supposed to be there. So mm-hmm. in my mind, it's like, yo, ain't no way we get him, so we're going to get this dude for now because we couldn't do better. What happened to Justin Blackman? What happened to him? Uh, w- we've been corrected on that. Uh, Melly Mac says it's Julian Blackman. Okay, I'll be wrong because I don't know these people. But yeah, I didn't. I, I thought it was maybe there. There is a Justin. Justin Black. Yeah, that's the white receiver that played for Jackson. But is it that flamed out from, uh, from Oklahoma, Oklahoma State? State? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. Julian Blackman. So yeah, he he. When he was in, I I started. I, I looked at him. I watched his film. I said, okay, I can see them working with this guy. I can see, you know, his 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 fit in our off in our defense, and then they're like. Fooled you. We got Mike White. I'm like uh, Mike Edwards. I'm like, huh? You know, yeah, I'm, like, I'm like restructuring. I'm rethinking everything. It's not that he sucks. It's just that in my mind, you go from a guy that's that's going to get you a three year contract. It's yeah. going to be probably twenty million every you know for three years. Yeah. Versus this guy is a one year probably vet men two million dollar contract. Yeah. It just it just doesn't look right to me. I, I just don't think I I think that's what he's here for. Your um, your Cameron Curl is showing. Um. <laughs> Don't bring that up. Four point eight million per. We could have got it done. That's why they signed this guy. And he took number no, twenty one. That's already. why you burnt over them signing this guy. That's really and what it comes he down took to. number twenty one already. Who are you, sir? Jordan Perry, like, who this clown? Who are you, sir? That is disrespectful. Oh my gosh! Listen. Um, I, the 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 Bills and I and I said this last episode. This is this is what the Bills do. They they they, they hire they sign a bunch of guys that uh, you know put them in a position to where they don't have to go looking for an elite player at a certain position. What they what it seems like I can't I can't say definitively, but what it seems like based on you know what we know about McDermott and what we know about uh, Brandon Bean and, and how they run the uh, the organization. Sean wants guys that are coming in with no ego, no no thought in their minds of what's owed to them because they were drafted in the first round. They want guys to come in and earn their 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 spot. Again, this is this is what they do, right? But but you this is this is why they do it this way because if if you're let's say you're a wide receiver and let's say they never signed uh, Curtis Samuel, right? They got a big old gaping hole at, at wide receiver number two. Mm-hmm. If you draft Brian Thomas Jr. and he comes into camp and he looks around, all I got to compete with is Mac Hollins? Man, move out the way. Man, watch out. Right. <laughs> watch <laughs> right. out. Right. I'm going to go run these three routes. And I don't got to. I don't got to practice the rest of the time. I'm not saying right. he's he's actually going to be that way, but I think this is this is the, the the fear that sticks in Sean McDermott's mind is that whoever he drafts is going to come in here with a national line attitude because they're going to you know take a look around and think, well, who, who who's going to compete with me? Yo, if you don't have guys that come in into any locker room and look at that and and, and and behave like that, you're not winning a Super Bowl, right? You know, I mean, I want I want uh, uh, Brian Thomas. I want Xavier Worthy. I want Ad Nimish. I want uh, Troy Franklin to come in the locker room and say, you know what, Curtis Samuel, four point four yards after catch, that's all right. Matt Collins, thirty years old, journeyman, that's all right. Watch what I do. I, right. That's what I want. I want a guy that goes to Steph Diggs. I, I want that. Yeah. At this point, and I'm a Diggs fan. I want that guy that goes to Diggs. Say, you know what. Watch out! You don't have to say it, yeah, but but your head coach is an underdog specialist. I know that, but I mean like, that's the, all he knows how to communicate is underdog, and, and, and you're your underdog whisperer. Um, <laughs> right? That's exactly why he signs guys like this. Like the it, the the team cannot perform when they are a favorite in, in, in any in any facet of of the game. Period. No, they can't. No, they like can't. <laughs> realistically, no, they can't. the only people on this team that can perform. From an, an an overdog standpoint, is Diggs, Josh Allen. Um, can Milano. we say? Can we? We can't say Ed Oliver. I mean, Milano. he's had a couple of opportunities in the playoffs, hasn't shown up. When Milano plays, he's, he's yeah, in Milano there too. Yeah, he's when he's in there too. when he's healthy, absolutely. Yeah. 
But that's, um, that's pretty much I it. think Terrell Bernard would be one of those dudes that he can will, show up. I, I think he will be. I think he will be. He hasn't had a chance to prove it yet, but I think he right. will be. So we got we got a few dogs on the team, mm-hmm. but, you know, evidently th- this team is full of a bunch of dudes that, you know, Sean McDermott feels like he can control and feels like, you know, he can relate to to some degree, even though he hasn't shown that he can't. Dude, you, th- you, just, you just cracked open Pandora's box. Okay. Run those names down again. Who who the dogs? Terrell Bernard, Matt Milano. Third round. Fourth round. Steph Diggs. Fifth round. Fifth round. Josh Allen. First. Right. Who else? Only one blue chip. Can we say Curtis Samuel now? No. No? No. Okay. No. Uh, Curtis Samuel, he's another guy. I I I don't think he's a dog. Okay. I think he has I think he has the he has the, the, the athleticism and his the potential to be one, but I don't think he's ever gonna realize it because He's never had a quarterback, though. Well, even in college, he did in college. He, oh. he, he was he did the exact. That's the thing about Samuel I didn't like. Even in college at Ohio State, same he had dude. the same numbers, exact same numbers. And I'm like, I mean, he was with. Uh, did uh, he play? Who did he play with in in, uh, in college? Like the other receiver? Uh, wasn't it, wasn't it wasn't it Dotson? Who do you have there? Josh Dotson. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, because I think they went together. He wasn't. He wasn't bad. No. Well, he wasn't great in, in the NFL, but he wasn't bad either. All right. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, you go ahead and do, you, 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 you continue your point. If you got more comments, go ahead and read them. I uh, so out. Steve actually explained why we only got a fourth. Uh, he, he says uh, because Edmonds only played 81% of snaps right. and not 85% That's of right. snaps. They did us like Russell Wilson. Well, he got hurt. Huh? He got hurt. I think he got hurt at some point. So. Oh yeah, of course he got hurt. Like Gabe Davis played a, played a whole season with a well, a high ankle sprain. Well, I mean, he was out there running. He was doing cardio. Right. Yeah, he was doing cardio. He played the whole season with a high ankle sprain. What the thing is, had Tremaine Edmonds played the whole season with a high ankle sprain or, or whatever his injury was, you, there's other metrics as well, and he probably wouldn't hit him if he's injured. So. In terms of like what, how many snaps or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it depends on who you know well, what's in the, is, in the language. But yeah, like, there's there's snaps, there's Pro Bowls, there's All Pro. You get you get moved up if you're all. You have to be. I think and that goes into compensatory picks. Com, the third round, you have to be. You have to be considered a top five contract, uh, top five percent contract in the league. Mm-hmm. One, so he got that. Then it was snaps. Then there was like I don't know if the, you know it could have been sacks, interceptions, tackles, mm-hmm. all that stuff, tackles for loss, Pro Bowls, uh, uh, All Pros, things like that. All that goes into the picks. So even if he would have played all the, all the games he could have played, right. he probably would have still frustrated. Third is hard to do, and plus you got to remember they only have thirty two possible compensatory picks. Right. If you if you go over thirty two, whoever edges out, you're done. Even though you qualify, you're done. Yeah, I, I think I'm still I'm still with Mac with the, on, on this one. In terms of the draft, I think I, I have not seen the Bills just sit back and just pick ten players. Like I think the, the no. most the most picks that we've had before this was like eight or nine eight. or something like that. Like I said, eight is probably a safe number this year. Yeah, but that doesn't help in the in the in the, in the main frame when you're talking about moving up dramatically to get somebody. Well, yeah, they don't. I mean, I know it, Matt wants Marvin Harrison Jr., but. I want him too. I'm not going. Mac don't want the dude. Didn't go to pro day. He didn't go to the combine. You know, Mac don't want nothing to do with him. What? You just said he wanted him though. I was being sarcastic. Oh. he didn't go. To, he didn't go to his pro day. He oh, didn't yeah. go to his, well, his he don't combine. Want like, listen, listen. Your boy, your boy Steve Smith is like, yo, Doomsday is not the dude everybody think he is. I don't. I don't, I don't like. I'm. I'm not gonna say I don't like him because I like him for what he is. But like I said, in our offense, it doesn't work. It doesn't think work. So? No, because he's a possession guy. And I think I think they're going to want guys that, that Curtis Samuel level fly. Mac 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 uh, Hollins even was a he wasn't a flyer, but he got down. He was at least Gabe Davis when in a deep game. Um, you know he 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 had what four or five speed, but he stacked real good and, and he got down the field. Um, but yeah, I, I think I really do think that they're they're going for. I mean, how can you miss on speed? Mm. Lab McConkey four three, Brian Thomas four three, <laughs> Troy Franklin four four. Uh, uh, who am I missing? Xavier Werther four two. Uh, Add nine miss a four three. You can't miss on speed. Yeah. I mean, even if you go into the third, fourth round with with with, uh, with uh, 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 Jermaine Burton right. four four two. Um, with my terrible comment reading skills in this episode, I did miss a good question uh, Solomon asked earlier. It's 
probably almost an hour ago. No, it was about 20 minutes ago. Sorry, uh, Solomon. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, my bad. We were answering uh, the other he, questions. He asked, uh, is, is, is Xavier Leggett a possibility in a second? 100%. I mean, he'll be there. You, you think so? He'll be there. Okay. He'll be there. Make, make it, making sure you, you, you like, certain. He'll be there. Okay. Yeah, he'll be there. Now is is this the, is this a he'll be there because nobody you know is going to draft him until like the third or fourth or is it like I I think because I just allure, I just don't see how there's that many players better than him in the second round I I think the allure of, of Xavier Leggett precedes his actual gameplay um, because the more the layers peel back on Xavier Leggett the more people are like yo this dude just fell into a lucky season he had one great season. The rest of the seasons all combined were toilet bowl. I mean, less than toilet bowl. He played five years. Mm. And I think all together he had, in the other four years, he had like 400 yards of total offense. He had one year where he exploded with, with, uh, with uh, what's the guy's name, uh, Rattler. Uh, yeah, so um, I think the more they dig into his tape, the more they dig into his deficiencies, he'll probably fall. No, I don't know what he did at his, at his combine, but getting into what we were talking about with, with Mel, and I know I'm kind of skewing from the point, but this is this is actually one of the earlier things I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, just touch on. If my oh, there it is right there. Uh, players who said they would like to play with the Bills. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to get tired of this, believe it or not. <laughs> Brian Thomas Jr. Yep. He's he's familiar with uh, with Joe Brady. I like his offense, so I feel like I could fit with, pretty good with that offense. Xavier Worthy, Josh Allen's a real good quarterback. Uh, no, that's right, frankly. Xavier Worthy said, "Tough runs hard and has a good deep ball. He throws the ball well. I feel like I fit the Bills' offense well. They kind of have that pro style offense as we did in Texas. Run first, pass second. So I feel like I fit in with that offense. Now Xavier Leggett, as we all know." I had a great conversation. I feel like the interview went well. I just want those guys to make it happen if they can make it happen. What I feel like I can bring to any team is just hard work, a hardworking guy and someone who can be consistent every day and bring something to the table. Hardworking guy. They love to say he's a hardworking guy. I bet you. His agent taught him well. I bet you. <clears throat> he's a first guy in, last guy out kind of guy. <laughs> I bet you that. <laughs> Yeah, so is Keon Coleman. Keon, um, <laughs> Keon Coleman. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be great for me. I like to learn for a guy with a stature who's been in the league for a while, doing it consistent, consistently. Uh, as you all know, he he said I could I could throw I can I, I can uh, what do you say I can catch every ball Josh Allen throws or throw it deep to me or whatever. He cannot throw me. Troy Franklin, strong arm can get the ball downfield leader. I think he's a good guy for sure. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> Solomon said, "Well, we're not getting any of them." <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, you know. It, People get wrapped up in what they say. I know we preach all the time. McDermott don't say Jack. It's boring. But there's a, there's a fine line, right? Because guess what? Insert team name. He goes into other teams' locker, the other teams' little uh, meeting room. Mm -hmm. Insert that. Russell Wilson. Let's ride. Uh, uh, yeah, Let's I said ride. it. Let's ride. Oh, see. Oh, he's like, no, this this is it. He's like, okay, so <laughs> I'm so really we trying. I'm 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 trying. No, this so this hard. is what happened. I'm telling you right now. Xavier uh -huh. Leggett. Goes in the Houston, the Houston Texans room. Sees uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, the coach. Uh, For where the Texans? Um, oh, um, D'Amico Ryan. Ryan's. He's like, yeah, I, I really respect your offense, and I like to. Who's your quarterback? Oh, C.J. Stroud. <laughs> I really want to play with him. Insert name. I guarantee you, that's how their their scouts yeah. tell them to talk. So yeah. don't feed in all this stuff. They want to play for whoever's going to play on money. They want to retire with whoever's going to pay them until they decide they don't want to play no more. Right. End of story. Who who's whose fault is this? Is it is it the is it the is it the Bills' fault? Is it the media's fault? Is it the fans' fault for falling for it? Fans' fault. And I'm really? glad you said that. I'm well. Yes, yes, yes. It's twofold. Okay. Fans' fault, media fault. Now let's 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 draw it back to uh, the producer uh, talking about uh, Curtis. Uh, Curtis Cousins, Kirk Cousins. Uh, <laughs> I Solomon said, Curtis. "Cut Russell some slack." No, let, let, let's no. ride. Let's ride. 
Solomon, in the comments, let's ride. Put five five exclamation points. Wait, 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 Solomon, um, if you do that, you're not allowed back here. <laughs> yes, you I, are. I, I promise I am, you. I am a co uh, uh, I am a co uh, moderator. Don't worry about it. You are safe with me. Um, <laughs> me too. Let's ride. Let's ride. But going back in. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna take this over. Anyway, I might flip a table in here. I Which might. one? Your half or my half? Huh? Your half or my half? I don't know yet. Wow, that's that's deep. <laughs> anyway, going the reason why 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 I remember when you said uh, Kirk Cousins and and the retirement question. Yeah. Yes, everybody's everybody's gonna love that that statement unless your name is Steph Diggs. How many times has this man said? No, 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 for real, bro. How many times has this man said? <laughs> Look at the comment. On record. Oh, yeah. I want to retire a bill. Right. But right. when the media comes and says Steph Diggs is being cryptic, the man said, I'm ready for whatever. My team is 40 plus million dollars in salary cap hell. I don't know. I'm the third highest paid player on this team. That's a great point. Know. That's a great point. They didn't hit me up with a restructure. I don't know where I'm going to be. Yeah. Ready for whatever. But now the media says, oh, this dude's a cancer. Where? Well, it's because they keep putting out puff pieces like this that make everybody exactly. feel Exactly. But the thing is, every time Deion Dawkins tweets out, <laughs> who falls for it? The fans. Yep. Then time. that's why I say it's twofold, because the media puts that garbage out there, and the fans decide every year I'm going to fall for it. Meanwhile, Deion Dawkins, I'm sorry, he's going to be a pro bowler. Pro bowler again. Steph Diggs is going to give you 12, 1,300 yards again. Yeah. So stop. <laughs> Just stop. Yeah. Because they want to play for whoever's going to pay them, and they're going to retire for whoever they play for when they don't want to play anymore. End of story. Uh, Max says, I think it has some weight. Yes, they wanted to get paid, but they also want, uh, they also want to they want to where they have a good QB. Let's Go not, where they have a good QB? Huh? Go where they have a good QB? Yeah, yeah, he said. He said, "Let's not bring up Eli Manning, <laughs> my boy, my boy." Key, Jones. Key, key, I got the you. The Patriot Jones. killer. You got the it. Pa- no, no, the Patriot killer. <laughs> Let's try. Patriot right. killer. <laughs> <Yeah>. Let's try. <right. laughs> yeah. So this is a competition now between me trying to bring up Eli Manning and y'all saying let's ride the rest of the night. Yeah, you innocently brought that after you know about fifteen years later. You still need a ride home, sir. No, you don't. <laughs> American, I'd be a little late. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so no, you, 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 yeah, uh, I, I think when it comes to who says what, that's what where the weight comes because everybody is trained to think, oh, Steph Diggs and Buffalo, the good old, the good old boy. Yeah. Nobody speaks out against the Bills, even though he's one of the reasons why we are where we are right now. Right. Josh Allen got to throw to somebody, and guess what? There's only one player on this team that he's thrown to since he's been here. Imagine this show being big enough to be able to talk, you know, about the Bills the way that we do. Imagine right. that. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine having followers that actually will, will stomach it for for an hour to three hours a day, depending on we, when we run out of air. Man, can you imagine something like that? It's crazy. We got to make it happen one day. <laughs> uh, I want to squeeze this in really quick. Uh, since, since we're talking about all of these uh, players that we've signed that are, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was funny because uh, Lin- Lindsay came in immediately and was like, uh, before she even said hi, she's like, yo, who the hell is Clap? <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Lindsay, do I have, can I have the floor? Can I have the floor? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I got to put my phone up because the notes didn't transfer. But I got notes for y'all today, boy. Go on with it. I got notes for y'all. So, oh, Lord. oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll be all right. So, we got uh, Will Clap. <laughs> she said, who the hell is that? No. Why is his name Will, though? <coughs> Why is his name Will? <laughs> Will Sliff. Will Clap. Will Sliff. <laughs> It's been a long week. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, it sounds like it. You know, when you texted me, when you woke up that day. I had just got home. Oh, and I like just got home. You probably like, why is he up? I had just got home. I just woke up. See, <laughs> <laughs> when you stop texting, like, yeah, he gone. Real, um, real quick before you get to clap, uh, Solomon says, I think Kirk has the greatest agent of all time. He knows how to get, uh, how to. He be finesse. He knows how system. to put position. Oh, position contracts, which makes Kirk the best available quarterback. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent, ain't no, ain't no lie in that one. Yep. So, Will Clap. William he is Bennett William, Clapp. William Bennett Clap. He is twenty eight years old from LSU, drafted in the seventh round by the New Orleans Saints in the two thousand eighteen draft, two hundred forty fifth overall. Uh, what do we have for him in his one year of starting? I have him. Oof. 
being 81st out of a possible 120 qualifying uh, guards and centers combined in run blocking. Ugh. 75th out of 120 possible uh, guards and centers. And these are starters. Ugh. In pass blocking. He gave up one sack, seven hits, 17 hurries, and 24 pressures. How bad do you think Deion Dawkins was? I didn't compare him because it ain't nowhere near that bad. Watch this. Um, now, in my in my other my other uh, notes here, pro, pro Football Focus. Actually, no, this is his scouting report. Raw power is lacking, and will lead. What is with these guys liking these weak guards and centers? Why well, do they? Why do they like that? So okay. So the Bills last year when they when they switched to the twelve uh, the uh, twelve formation, <clears throat> they went more with more of a zone blocking scheme. So in in a zone blocking scheme, you don't you don't necessarily have to have the strongest yeah, yeah, linemen. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they just have to be technically sound and they have to be mobile guys. So I think they that's part of the reason they were they they've been trying to sign a bunch of linemen with high with high um, re- relative athletic scores. Mm-hmm. It, it's specifically for that. I mean, See, if they had a, if they had a, a high RAS score, I get it. But Mike Edwards was was just average. Will Clapp, I'm guaranteeing, was just average. Like, what are you? Okay, I'm sorry. I just had a moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but to, 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 <laughs> Solomon to, said he putting Clapp in the clinch. <laughs> <laughs> but to 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 bring this home, he's only played center. He has he played one snap at tight end. Obviously, the, the so David he's never Edwards played role. guard. No, he's a center, and that's it. Center. So he's our backup center now. This is another one of those deals where it's like they they did say in the publication uh, they left guard slash center. Yeah, yeah, he's not a guard. He's never played guard before, wow. so he's going to be a swing guy. So in his career, he's given in in, in since two thousand eighteen, he's had let's see. 1,000 right. 1, uh, uh, pass blocking snaps. Of those 1,000 snaps, he's allowed six sacks, 17 hits, 36 hurries, uh, 59 pressures. He has seven, uh, seven penalties. So, I – I mean, is this, is, this, is this the Bills, like, really trying? Because, honestly, like, if I, if I was – This is this – If is I was playing me. Madden and I looked at those stats, I'd be like – yeah, I can sign him to a one year deal. You know, he could be back up or something like that. Like, just, just from looking at the stats, I don't even got to watch the dude play. Like, just looking at the stats, like, eh, right. you know, maybe. This he, could, is what he, gets could, me. he could be a backup on my team. But they did get rid of Bates, and they, they need a swing guy. Mm-hmm. This kind of makes sense for that. I just, I probably wouldn't have. You know what? At, at, at some point, this has to be about their belief in the offensive line coach at the same time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Maybe they did the research on the offensive line coach in LA. It's like, nah, that dude is trash. Now I will say this: I, I misspoke. He did play guard his rookie year, so he played guard his rookie year. <clears throat> Must have flamed out because he didn't stay guard his rookie year. Right. After that, didn't even stay on the field after that. So now you're in Buffalo, right? So are you planning on moving this guy to guard to to play in front of David Edwards? Are you? Is I mean. Like Steve said, <laughs> this is not the draft of twelve with offensive linemen. You can't say, "Oh, I'm just 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 in case." Right. There is no just in case. You, you I mean you could you probably, you might be able to get Van Pran in the second round. I mean, Powers Johnson isn't going to be there. Yeah, but anybody you get, I, I just over the guys that we already have in a in a starting position on the line, I can't see us drafting anybody in the second round or beyond that but, would come in and challenge. Well, second round offensive lineman, I could see only especially if it's a center. Because I could see a world where they move, where they moved uh, McGovern. Uh, McGovern back to guard. I know you don't like it, but I could see that happening. They could, they could move him to the bench. They could. I would take that. But okay, let me ask you: Would you be okay if he was a guard with a center that actually has some 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 power and anchor? No. No. Okay. No. Because right, he because so. he can't. He's not a great run blocker. Right. He's a he's a halfway decent pass blocker. Yeah, he was supposed to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that was that was his you know call his to fame. But, card, yeah. But um. Yeah, I, even even with the help, I, I don't I don't want to depend on that. You know what I mean? It, it, mm-hmm. it was, it's like when we had um, Jeff Hangartner at center, right? Like he he wasn't a he wasn't a great center, mm-hmm. but when you put Eric Wood at guard and you got Andy Levitri at guard, he's okay, mm-hmm. right? But I don't want like defenses are too good now. 
Mm-hmm. These defensive tackles are too good now, right? They could easily get, you know, uh, 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 McGovern singled up on a – what you chuckling about over there? It wasn't us. Uh, uh, it's in the comments. Steve Lenz says, tell me you're broke without saying you're broke. Bill signings. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> um, okay, so re- really quick. Uh, uh, yeah, scratch this. I want to get to – I want to get to the stadium talk before before we do that. Yeah. We didn't we didn't touch on uh, Casey Tool Two Hill. Do we need to? Yes, because this is another one of those deals where, like you said, is, is it? A, I mean, can, we we can't just this is this is three minutes because he's here. Stick a clap in it. Hey, you yo. make it clap. <laughs> I, no, yo, no. if he's good, there's somebody's gonna say that. I guarantee you, that's gonna be a thing. I guarantee because they're going, oh, funny. No, it's not. But they're still going to do it. If they play that song at the stadium for him. If they get to, if he's good enough where they can for a guard or center, if you are that noticeable as a center or guard that you have your theme song, you are going to say okay, all the things. Okay, no, you, you might be right. Because if we <laughs> sign if we sign the clap and he comes here mm-hmm. and he ends up being Wyatt Teller, <laughs> they better play, just make it clap. They better play that all game long and never stop if he turns out to be Wyatt Teller. I, like, that would be one of the greatest stories I've ever seen in Bill's history. <laughs> the greatest in, re- in reverse because Wyatt Teller already left. The um, greatest in reverse. <laughs> but, yeah, all right. So two Real real quick, Casey Toole, seven career sacks, nine career tackles for loss, 57 games, 14 of them were starts, 20 career quarterback hits. Will he make the team? Yes, only because – there won't be any defensive defensive ends better than him. We don't have a, a Kingsley Jonathan back there to knock him off his spot. Oh, he's there. Kingsley Jonathan? He's still here. He's well, still here. Okay, so who else? Who, but who else do we have? Lawson uh, is gone. Lawson, for now. Right. So he's, we got, he's still trying to get a, a contract, but he'll probably be back on a one-year contract. You think so? They just signed. Just do a too risky contract. I don't know if they Just sign this dude. Just give him two years at $3 million. Just call it a day. You keep bringing him back. It's like Solomon. So don't stupid. send us down this road, bro. We Did will go. Did you do we it? will go. He said, "Yo, I wonder if Clap trash talks." <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Clap? He has to. <laughs> he has to. Remember Kevin Hart in the Forty Year Old Virgin, yeah. where he was threatening to do like this, your man? Cause, <laughs> this, this your man? Because. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> imagine Clap doing that in the game. <laughs> Oh my gosh! He has to. Yeah, yeah. Don't send us down that road. We, uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Go ahead, Two Hill, please. Uh, so, okay, so they, we got, we got, we got Groot. We got Epinesa. We got Kingsley Jonathan. We got Two Hill. Mm-hmm. Don't forget Vaughn. Vaughn. Va- <laughs> That's forget five. That. That's five. And the guy we're gonna draft in the, at the end of the draft. Here. So you're looking. I'm honestly, I think they're gonna draft. Uh, either Jalen Harrell, I think they're gonna. They might look at. They might look at. Uh, <coughs> nah, Chris Braswell probably not. But I think they're gonna look at maybe maybe Johnson from Ole Miss. I'm telling you, fifth, sixth, seventh round, they're gonna get. A, they're gonna get a pass rusher, a developmental pass rusher. Oy. Steve writes in free agent signings, giving me major league movie flashbacks. Who the f is this guy? <laughs> right. Steve, you and I both. You and I both. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, what? We we don't have a choice. This, I just, this no, is, you this don't. Is, this is what the the kicking of the can down the road has done to this team now. To where we're we're Wait stuck. A minute. One, huh? I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do it now. What? What is it? This is why we started the show because we want you as fans to know you have the power to make a difference. Hundred percent. And this crap will not stand. I am not standing for Casey Tool. I'm not going to clap for clap. <laughs> he did it. Yo, bro. He did it. I'm not doing it. Pause, bro. I shouldn't. Why is that pause? Bro, the way I I'm not going to clap for there's, clap. There's no way that's a pause. <laughs> bro, the way I used this man's last name is crazy. Why is it, but why was that one pause? <laughs> there's no way. Oh, like, uh, there's nothing wrong with that one. I am no, Oh, that. I meant to tell you. Uh, Rich Rich sent me on on, uh, on Messenger. He sent me the, the, the origin of, of pause. <laughs> or and why it became so big? Yeah, why? So <laughs> I got it. Oh, I got here. This well, a lot of so, everybody over thirty wants to know this. <laughs> well, so they they just they just started doing it out of nowhere on the show, right? And then and then 
like it was funny, mm-hmm. right? But then they just stopped, and then people kept like asking, like, where, "Where's where's the pause? Why you why you don't say?" Oh. It? So they they just they brought oh. it back. They just made it a thing. Wait, and, like that's really it's that simple. But I mean, I like, you see this little box. Yeah. Put pause in this little box. Close the lid and toss it in the ocean, <laughs> and then burn the whole ocean. Burn the ocean, <laughs> all of it. No water. burn all of it. Sorry, Tony Baker, no water. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I. I it, you know what, Steve, in the comments, I got to know you. I respect you. Matter of fact, I respect all y'all. What do you think about Mike, Mike Edwards? Go. Oh, uh, anyway. I just, I, he said it. Who the F is this guy? Yeah, that's that's how it is. That says it, that says and, it all about you know what's funny about it? In the show I listened to, uh, that I was in the gym listening to, we were talking about, I think somebody asked us, which do you think they're being is better at, the draft or free, agent, free agency? And we all said the draft. Yep. Because of crap like this, every year we got we always get one. It's always one got a ooh, and then it's like yo. This might be a little inflammatory, but the funny part about all of this, mm-hmm. and Steve, this might be right up your alley. Check this out. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that the Bills' free agency periods have looked very, like really that much different. From any other year, mm-hmm. when they had money, mm-hmm. like that's the sad part. That that that's the part that you know. I look at this and I'm like, did did we really learn anything? Like, ha- have we taken this limited amount of money and decided to go and find value, right. as opposed to just signing a bunch of culture guys, right? Right. And if you look at it, what what has been different about the way that they've operated this free agency in in terms of the guys that they've signed? where these guys come from, how much money they're spending on these guys. Like, they're not doing anything different. And that's the part that gets me to, to, to you know, back to my, my stance where I was at at the beginning of, of this show, the, you know, at, at, the, at the genesis of it, mm-hmm. is we need McDermott to, to either change fully or just, just let yourself get fired, bro. <laughs> just be like, who can he be like? Be like Ron Rivera. I was just going to say that. Be like Rivera, bro. Just refuse to change. I, it's hard to say that about Rivera because he became River Ron for a year mm-hmm. and then went back to his old ways. But just <laughs> just X out the whole Riverboat Ron year and just 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 be consistent in who you are and just get fired, bro. Just just get not even not even in a in a crash and burn kind of way, but just like a a pat on the back. We kind of knew this was coming. You know, we thought about getting you a gold watch, but we decided to get you, you know, gold plated. That that kind of yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, this is the thing. I'm on spot track right now. With <laughs> Will Clap, Mike Ev- Mike Edwards. I'm gonna keep Mike. Coming. I'm gonna keep Mike Evans for some reason. Casey Two Hill. Without them being in the cap, we are now sitting at eight million dollars. Over or under rather? Under. We still got eight eight million dollars, but that's not with them. Ty Johnson. Uh, any of those guys is included in, in their salary figure. So that's, what is that? That's the 51, the top 51 figure. The, the, the all figure is 2.9 mil. So <clears throat> I, I'm interested. Well, in top 51 numbers. is all that counts, right? Right now. <clears throat> yeah, right now. But, you know, you got to get under under cap compliance yet once you cut to the 53-man roster. Um Gotcha. I, this is the last thing I'm saying. You can get on your soapbox about your thing. I know you're passionate about well, it. Well, how much time do you have? Oh, you 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 got I'd say 20, 25 minutes. Okay, so, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but yes, I, I thought about it when we talked about the restructure of Josh Allen. Why they only do half his contract? Guess what? We're twelve million dollars over the cap next year. <clears throat> so, guess what? The rest of his restructure is going to be next year. And mm. I and I thought about this too. And I promise this is this is my last thought. Unless no, you no, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> Why is it now Bean is, is, doesn't like restructuring? He said un, out of his own mouth, I don't really like kicking the can that far down the road. You did it with Mitch Morris. You did it with Deion Dog. You did it with Steph Diggs. You did it with Von Miller. You did it with – but yeah. you won't do it with your franchise 28-year-old quarterback? Yeah. That's the one dude you do it with. <laughs> right. Right or wrong. That is the one guy without a shadow of a doubt because he's going to be here. He built a house. A, a nice house. Have I seen it? No. But it's Josh. It's got to be nice. I mean, you got that. You just signed that Oliver. Those are the two dudes that you do restructure. 
you automatic automatically base restructure they're going to be here. i don't care how you formulate it for the next couple of years 60 million dollar contract uh it hit the cap hit in a couple of years fine he's right. gonna be on a team right Steph Diggs won't because he'll probably he'll be done by then what are you talking about <laughs> What are you talking about? See, we might have to bet some wings on this, man. Uh, he says, uh, he says we don't draft a wide receiver in the first. <laughs> Firings are coming unless fans can sit uh, four years in a row listening to how we need speed and playmakers and, and draft defensive scrubs. I mean, it, it's it's been it's been six years. Yeah, honestly, and this, and that's the see that's that's why I am the way I am with this draft. I agree, I agree, I agree. But in my eyes, the talent pool of wide receiver is so deep. I just don't see them. I don't see a, a big drop off from first and second tier. I mean, not not Roman and not that three. Yeah. That's that's special. But you're talking about at nice. You're talking about uh, uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Even uh, McConkey. Should, then you talk about you're talking about your your Jermaine Burton. You're talking about your 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 McCarthy. Not McCarthy. Uh, I forgot his wide receiver's name. But you're talking about uh, uh, Xavier Xavier Worthies and guys like that. Deshaun oh, you Polk. meant uh, McConkey. No, no, uh, oh. the, the guy from Michigan. Uh, they got a, they got like a five five eight, <coughs> oh, okay, not speedster. Okay. I'm, I'm not really impressed with him, but he's up there. Um, but that first and that 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 one B tier to the mm-hmm. two tier, it's not a big drop off. And I can see a lot of those guys making a, ma- a major impact in our, in our system right away. Right. So that's why I'm like, I don't see where they're gonna trade up now because I said that, and they always do what I don't say they're gonna do. We're going to end up with, with freaking Roma Dunsey or something like that because they're going to give the whole draft up for one guy. For the first time in, in the history of, of – Can he get separation? Bills. That, like, to me – okay, so as, as much as I want to look at the wide receiver signings and say, ooh, we got enough speed to run an air raid now, <clears throat> I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Keep getting faster. Keep getting faster because guess what? I just thought about it in the – in the draft, there is uh, what is his name? I, I want to say it's not it's not Coker. It's uh, from Ariz- from Arizona. Um, good lord, <clears throat> Jacob Cowan. Jacob Cowan. He's he's five eight. He runs a four three eight. The guy the guy is probably the best route runner outside of the top three. Uh, wow. In his draft, I mean, he just separates for years. You said separation, and I thought about it right away. Uh, he's <coughs> undersized, obviously, but out of the slot, they also use him on outside. He's he's small, but if you watch the tape, he looks like he can do it. He's everything they wanted Deontay Hardy to be, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Jeez. He's taller than Hardy, but but I mean, I, I think I think if you're looking at if you're looking at uh, Xavier Worthy. Yeah, you could definitely have him in the second round, and that be that would satisfy your separation of speed. If you're looking, I mean, there's so many guys. If you do your research, not you, but people that, yeah. that are afraid of the first round and, and the fall off, just take a look at some of these wide receivers. Look at their highlights. Look at some of their their game tape. There's a lot of YouTube out there. If you didn't watch them, in, you know, in real time, that you can see, it's it's not as bad if they don't if they don't get that guy at 28. It's really not. Hmm. That's an interesting thought. Um, Steve writes in, here's a question. Is the divisional round our floor or our ceiling under McDermott? AFC Championship was in COVID year and a long time ago. If you follow stocks, I say that the divisional round is the resistance. In other words, if you know about stocks, it's, it's, it's resistance and there's support. Support is the bottom line where, where once you're in a decline, it pops off and goes back up. Resistance, you can pop through it, but you almost always. So I don't want to say ceiling because that's concrete. You can't. You can't go past it. But there's that one off chance where you might get to the conference championship. You might get the Super Bowl. But that's not. That's not where I think his 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 trajectory should. Uh, it 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 doesn't allow us to expect that from him. If that makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say ceiling. I thought you would. I, mean, <laughs> I just I like and I mean funny. I thought that you would. you you. I love the way you described it because it it is it's it's the perfect way to describe it. It's how you should describe it. It you know you can't you can't say anything in particular is a ceiling, right? right. But because I'm pissed off <laughs> at the owner for keeping this head coach around for as long as he has with the uh, level of performance he's had, um, I, I I I do think with the moves that have been made. It's very hard to picture a future where the Bills just blow the draft out of the water and they get all these, you know, these elite, you know, 
trait guys that are going to come in here and become playmakers all over mm-hmm. the field. I, I can't see that. Right. I mean, in fact, I, what I what I project is none of these guys are going to be full time starters that we draft this year. Not because I'm, they shouldn't be, but yeah, you're right. Right. I, I think the guys that we draft this year are going to sit behind guys that 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 we signed in free agency, <clears throat> and we may see some of these guys come in. You know, in in the case of an injury or later on in the year when Sean thinks that they're ready to go out on the field and and show that you know show him you know what he's looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I I, I got to see something else that makes me you know believe differently than that. Right. Um, but before we run out of time, Your um, thing. Go ahead. Steve's got one more question. He goes, "Does does uh, does McDermott and Bean know that we are not only behind KC, since he uh, also has our number? Do the fans realize? No. Listen, no, they don't realize. Y- it. Yeah, that that's the short answer. I mean, if 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 people look around the league and they don't see the Texans coming up, if people look around the league and they and they don't think that you know the Ravens." can ruin our season if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Look no further than our division. I mean, this year we're safe, I would say. <clears throat> but how much longer are we going to be safe in our division? I mean. I think we'll be safe in our – well, okay. So, if, if if Aaron Rodgers – so, they just got um, – they got they got Tyron Smith at, uh, at left tackle in New York. Mm-hmm. That's a game changer. Mm-hmm. If you can't get pressure on Aaron Rodgers now because they don't have a turnstile at, at tackle anymore, right. you, you're going to have a real problem play, playing against the Jets. Yeah. They got a run game. They still got a defense. They're going to be able to draft <laughs> another receiver this year in a strong wide receiver draft. Yeah. They're going to be a problem for you. And that's the thing. you know. I mean, this year, okay, I'll say we'll probably get a division again this year. Miami, obviously, they're pretty much out of it. Um, just because of the money standpoint, you yeah. know, they're they're in trouble. But and I, their I, offensive line is, is, is yeah, they, torn they're, apart they're now. Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, that's not even a slight advantage. That's just that's reality. Right. But I, I just think I, I think that that people need to stop thinking about the Bills as being this 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 shoe in to do anything. Because last right. year showed you, if you weren't nervous last year at any point, I don't know, you you, you got cojones of stone. <laughs> because I can tell you, for even though we predicted ten and seven and, and eleven and six respectively. I didn't know if we were gonna make it at one point. Yep. Same. You know, so if you if you're sitting there like easy, I had I got one friend. I ain't gonna lie to you. I the guy that that, that razzed me about everything. Mm-hmm. He said, "Key, I told you, Key, we're good at six and six. We're gonna make it." I'm like, "Dude, how?" He's like, "Don't worry about it. We got it." You telling me there's no way? I'm like, "Pretty much, we got it." So I'll give him I'll give him a nod. I hope he's listening. I mean, I it, it took him it took him an offensive coordinator change and all that. You yeah. know, I I get it, but. I'm, We've seen we've seen the Bills do something like this before. Yeah, it's not like that. Too much. But the other part of that too is at that point when they were six and six, they were now underdogs of the entire league. And that's yeah. where they thrive. Yep. So anytime they're in that kind of position, it's like you you know they're gonna come through. Sean McDermott is the ultimate bad team head coach. Yeah. Like he can take a bad team and make them play as hard as anybody in the league can possibly play, mm-hmm. right? But if you're a good team, you might want to go find somebody else. Yeah, and that's what we've been dealing with for the last five years. Yeah. Um. Okay. So really quick, I want to. Do I you wanna, think? Do you think? I want to get to this. Um, I saw this post, uh, and it was it was a part of an article that was talking about um the season tickets situation in terms of um you know, it what's going to happen if you don't want to pay the price that they give you for the uh, the season tickets, right? Yep. Um, says here, for any Bills fan who may not want to pay the price for the seat similar to where they sit now and wish to move to another area at the new stadium, they will be pushed to the back of the line for that designate, designated spot when it comes time to talk to other season ticket holders. So basically... And I and I, I went back and I, I found the article um, that talks about the pricing for for the season tickets, right? Mm-hmm. For let's see, so it's starting at five hundred dollars for general seating, and reached as high as sixteen thousand five hundred for premier seating. So you're paying anywhere from five hundred bottom base level. To sixteen thousand yep. dollars, almost seventeen, for a seat. For a seat. For one seat. For a seat. 
for a season. In Buffalo. And that includes the personal seat license. The oh, PSL. Least that. Huh? At least it includes the PSL. The PSL prices alone in the survey that the, in the survey that got sent out last year ranged from twenty six hundred to five thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars in the lower level. Mm-hmm. In the mezzanine, it went from one thousand seven hundred and fifty to seventy three hundred. Okay, mm-hmm. and in the upper level, it went from five hundred to thirty two hundred dollars. So you mean to tell me if I open up my email and I see these prices and I have a mini heart attack (laughs) and I decide, you know what, I don't think I can do this right now. Mm -hmm. I got to go to the back of the line, in which case I may never get a season ticket at that point. Right. Like you basically Mm -hmm. holding these people hostage at this point. Yep. That's what you're telling them. Yep. How, how, how can we how, how can we make this clear to everybody that's viewing now and every Buffalo Bills fan in the entire city? What are we paying for? What are we paying for? With the, like we really need to start asking ourselves this. What are we paying taxes for? We're paying for a stadium that we have to go and freeze our cheeks off at to watch us make a divisional game and lose at home. And and you can only have football games here unless you're going to do a concert in the summertime. Right. Right. It's a tough pill to follow because see, this is a gift and a curse thing for me, though. Because if people pay this money, they're not going to be happy you drinking thirty dollars beers anymore, watching a team that's just out there representing Buffalo. They're not going to be out there accepting a coach that gives empty excuses to why they couldn't execute or it's on me. They're not going to be accepting losing three checks. Steve going off. Steve, <laughs> yeah. losing two, three checks of, of, of income just to hold the, the, the ability to buy a ticket to watch a team that isn't competitive. And when I say competitive, there's 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 was, there's high mark stadium competitive mm-hmm. and there's whatever the hell this stadium's name is competitive. <laughs> and I'm telling you, they ain't seen a competitive that goes to that state because when you want to see fans like the New York Jets fans, the Philadelphia Eagles fans, the Kansas City Chiefs fans. Yep. Wait till we get that stadium. Right. They are they already paying those prices. Yeah. So Wait those people that, that come to that, like those, those are the real fans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you gonna mm-hmm. pay you gonna pay sixteen thousand dollars to go chill in that stadium? Yep. R- really, really. This this is why I titled the, the episode Goodbye Tailgater. Yeah. How, how in the world are you gonna pay sixteen thousand dollars for one ticket? And who you gonna hang out with? <laughs> <laughs> like who? Who you gonna bring to the game with you for sixteen thousand dollars? Who's doing that? And I, 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 I told you, I told the story about the Edgar Severs area at the UB Stadium at the fifty yard line. They put those seats in. They made a club. I think they give them away to boosters. But every time you go to that stadium, you'll see maybe six people sitting in those seats. And there's there's easily fifty seats. You'll see six. And that's when UB was good on a bright sunny day. That's the only empty spot in that whole stadium. And that's how it's going to look at the, at, at the Bill Stadium. It's bad. It's bad. I mean, granted, there's, there's you know, things being done to the city to, to – and I'm not sure if this is going to be done by 2026, but I, I, you heard about the 33, right? But it was that? You heard about the uh, the 33. They're going to be yeah, yeah, like closing yeah. that up and yeah. building over it. So th- you know th- that's part of this Buffalo billions billions mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me Buffalo billions deal that that's going on here in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 major throughway that runs through the city, the 33 is going to be um, filled up and, and back built how over. It was in the 650s and 60s. Yeah. Right. Now, right. This is my thing about that, and I'm not going to say much because this is just a thought. We're doing that. We're, we're we we have uh, HSBC Arena. Mm-hmm but we don't have a train station that goes more than north and south. <laughs> it goes, and it doesn't even go all the way. It doesn't go to any attractions. It doesn't go to the airport. It doesn't go to Niagara Falls. It don't go anywhere but to UB South mm-hmm. and, 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 and the arena. Yeah. I got to drive to Main Street just to get on a train to go to, to it's like a little, it's, it's more of a novelty ride than anything. Yeah. I can't much. take my city seriously when you got this nonsense. <laughs> and we spend all this money to fill in a 30... For what? Yeah. You want to drive it? You want to be like Sweden where they drive under the, under the, under the ocean? 
Is that what they want? They want to drive into the river? That would be dope. That I would, would be I sweet. Would, I would, would pay doing? taxes for that all day uh, long. Yeah, that would be fun, though. Yeah. That would be I would 100%. Be I mean, I'm glad you said it. You know, at, least, at least now it's out in the air. I might have made myself happy. Uh, let's see. Outside Looking In says, I love the fact Steve Lynn goes uh, goes hard all while he has he has a Bumble profile pic. <laughs> Cold and smooth, just like, just like we like our beer. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! I, I I love all y'all, man. I really do. Oh, this this is a blast every time, man. That's it, why I love Mondays and Fridays. Honestly, this is yeah, this is the highlight. Yeah. The highlight. Oh my gosh! Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just I just wanted this to kind of be out there because this is you know these are the things that kind of get overlooked. You know, we're we're all in 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 the spin of you know free agency and all, all you know all these puff you know pieces that that are coming out about these players that want to be here and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like all, all of this is a very masterful job to divert our attention to you know junk. Mm-hmm. It's junk, it, and this is this is where we're looking. Meanwhile, all back here is stadium construction, personal C licenses taxes that that were being charged for for you know making it to the, to the divisional round 3 years in a row Sean McDermott and his inability to to coach in big games and 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 make game winning uh uh you know game plan calls like these are all the things that are happening you know behind us mm-hmm. meanwhile the media and, and and the Bills marketing team and every you know everything else going on in the city is making us look right here it, it's it's yeah. it's crazy Steve like Steve writes in no doubt um Get Buffalo baddies while I whine about my team. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. That was a good one. Um, yeah, man. So you know, I just at some point, at some point, we need to start pushing back on stuff like this. This is kind of my call to action to everybody that's here with us right now, and everybody that ends up watching this video. We got to start pushing back on some of this stuff, like. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 way that the Packers operate, they're they're owned by by their city, yep. right? And that's a team that you know they they've been a perennial pro uh, perennial playoff team, mm-hmm. pretty much every year that I that I've you know seen them, mm-hmm. right? And somehow they keep finding good quarterback after good quarterback after good quarterback, and now they got another one in Jordan Love, yep. right? I, how is it that a team with no owner is doing better long term than a team that that's only that that's you know had faithful owners, right? Nobody talks about pulling Green Bay out of uh, you know, pulling the Packers out of Green Bay, right? But still, and yet the, the the Buffalo Bills like we 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 hemorrhage tax money for this team that we're scared to death to lose. Like at some point we gotta just be like, you know what? We'll we'll pay taxes for for an owner and a team that's willing to come here and win. And they still play at Lambeau Field, right? And the Bears still play at Soldier Field. They retrofitted it, but it's still Soldier Field. I don't know if you, the Bills, the the Bears were a good. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying because the stadium. I'm just mentioning oh, the stadium. Okay, the okay. old the old stadium because we're what third oldest, something second like oldest, that. something like that. Something so. Like that. I mean, yeah. The thing is, people, it, it, you don't, you hear people complaining about it, but they were complaining. But we need a new, we need, we want to be modern. What do you think that comes with? A price tag. Yeah. And that's, that now the bill, is, the bill has been issued to you. Right. Now right. I need a raise in order to pay for this thing. Man, I listen. I, I need some investments. I need a life insurance plan that I can borrow against. <laughs> right. I need all kind of stuff. Right. Just to be able to pay for these tickets, they man. It's, it's insane. Donations. I don't even give blood. Hey. But I am extremely interested to see what tailgating looks like at the stadium. I mean, they, they've already said, you know, there's going to be, you know, a, a lot more amenities and, and you know, things avail- available, you know, inside the, the concourse of the stadium mm-hmm. and, and, you know, within the stadium itself. So, you know, if there's a lot more interactive stuff, maybe that takes away from, you know, tailgating all the same and, and, and it's not, you know, necessarily noticed. Yeah. I you mean, know what I mean? Yeah. Changes, including. So, oh. You set you set me up. All right. No, no. I'm, I'm, I was just. Uh, you go ahead. I was just trying to figure out where, where that sound was coming from. I know it's, oh, okay. it's a computer somewhere, but. Uh, Steve Lynn writes in. Bills always find good secondary players and linebackers every time. Uh, every team has a niche. Pittsburgh always drafts good wide receivers. Green Bay QBs. But you know what, Steve? I'll challenge you. I'll challenge you here. And obviously, we, we we're running close on time. So if you want to continue the conversation, we definitely can do that. But um, I don't think it's that they find the players. I think what it is is. 
they have the coaches that can develop the players in those positions that you that you speak of. Yeah. You know, I think that's the that's the major thing. Um, it might be let me see. It might be this. I'm not sure if this is where the sound is coming from, but. But yeah, that, that's what I, what I look at when I when I was pondering the table for Bob Babbage. I don't know when you started watching the show, but before we hired, I really wanted him to stay because of the because of the proof was in the pudding. The guys he worked with, the guys that were afterthoughts that that, that he made somebody, that he made sought after. Um, so even though he may not call the plays, I don't need him to because what he did is what I need him to keep doing, especially in the year when we can't afford these high priced, well established veterans. Right, right, right. Oh, well, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I I heard the the I heard the podcast last week and I didn't. The music was really 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 low. I don't know why it was, um, but hopefully this doesn't uh, make y'all go deaf uh, today. But um, Solomon, I don't know if you've been with us for a while. Um, if not, please go ahead and hit hit hit, hit that subscribe button for me real quick. Oh, your um, family now. But yeah, no doubt. You, no, in. you in there, bro. Together forever. But anyway, uh <laughs> Damn it outside looking in. You had to do it. You had to do it. Don't I'm not even saying this out loud. That I that, that's you earned that. I'm not reading this comment. Um <laughs> No, he said he said it's time. Let's ride. Let's ride. <laughs> Let's ride. <laughs> Let's go. God, I hate myself so much right now for reading that. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is the part of the show where I try to get through all of the announcements that I can get through. <laughs> These dudes is dying laughing right now. Post party podcast, let's ride. He just said that. In ninety seconds, let's ride. <laughs> oh my gosh! Then he said, "Let's clap." Hey, oh, yo. Even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> Let's clap. Uh, I'm just about to just clap this end stream button real quick. If you're happy, here. you know it. Clap your hands. If you oh, <laughs> Yo, if they played that every time he pancakes I was somebody. That when you said that yo. Oh, man. I'd be done. I'd be done. I would be into it. It'd be like my, my man with the flag. I'd be like, yo. This they got a dude thing. playing the organ. <laughs> 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 Oh. And people clap, clap. I'm like, day. where's my PSL? I need one. I gotta be here every week. I gotta be here. Every oh, week. you pay 16 grand for that, <laughs> huh? I gotta be here oh, for this man. one. I gotta be where everybody's clapping. Oh my god! Amongst god. my people. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. I'm serious now. All right. If you're hearing that music, that means I got 90 seconds to get us out of here. And so, he if you're hearing that music, I, see, that's an interruption. I guess. Let's ride. Uh, let's ride. You're not getting an announcement now. That's how that's going down. <laughs> if y'all if y'all if y'all like basketball and y'all looking for a podcast to go check out my oldest son Juni he's got his own podcast Basketball Truth and Knowledge go ahead and check him out whenever you get a chance please please T stop 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 she said time to fail that's uh, right anyway anyway thank you everybody for tuning in please go ahead and hit that su uh, subscribe button make that thing and that way you can get notifications anytime we put out new content um uh, all of our snap. All of our social media pages are in the link in the description. Go ahead and click those if you want to check our social media pages out. Yeah. Um, we are current on Spotify or whatever other uh, podcast platform you you listen to Wherever the podcast on. Find this <laughs> right. In case you don't have the YouTube Premium version where you can listen to it with the screen on lock. Um, with that being said, that's all I got. Uh, make sure you guys tune in Monday. Mac will be back with us um, in person, um, and we're gonna get to another great episode. You got anything else? That's right. That's right. I be uh, key. At least I made it on time. With that being said, this has been the Post Podium Podcast, home of the all truth, no sodium takes. I have been your co-host Aramis. And this is Key. And let's clap. Hey yo, nah. <laughs> Peace. Oh, yeah, wild.